Good evening and welcome back, everybody. We are here. It is Sunday. Hashtag yes, it is Sunday. Uh, and this is Into the Motherlands session. Well, episode three, session two, because uh, we had our session zero. My name is Eugenio. You might recognize me as DM Jazzy Hands, and I am the storyteller uh, for this very exciting sci-fi adventure. Uh, welcome back. So happy that you all are here. Happy to see all of you who've been with us for now this is your third week, or if this is your first time. Thanks so much for joining. We're so excited to be here. Um, we're going to go around and let's do uh, introductions so that you know who all all these other fine folks that you can see on screen with you are uh, before we do some housekeeping and then some storytelling. Uh, let's go straight around uh, on this overlay. So we're going to start this week with our creative director and our gracious host here on twitch.tv slash cypher of tear, Miss Tanya. You are muted, my dear. <laughs> Wouldn't be a stream if you didn't have a mute. Button. That's, how, that's exactly what I was going to say. We can't get through all four of you without a mute, so... Hey, look, I got to, now everybody else is in the clear. We know one else can mess That's it up. That's right. <laughs> um, hey, Tanya, Cypher of Tear. Um, I play your blade keeping high and high, high and right. That's it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we're here. Hopefully, we all survive the shenaniganry we left off with last week. And uh, hopefully, Sila 919 and, and Invicta can can not have an awkward moment after that conversation was overheard once we get out of the solar flare. I can't wait. I'm so excited. Everything about it made me happy. Excellent. I love it. Uh, going around the horn then from Tanya is Christina. Can you hear me or am I muted? No, you good. <laughs> it's for the first time. Hi, my name is Christina Ariel and I play Captain Sila919, they were Monsgane Bio Priest. And I'm really excited because, as much as Sila knows, uh, she never has done. So let's see what happens. Yeah, absolutely. Does knowledge equal experience? We shall find out, I think. Continuing on around in clockwise fashion, we head down to Michael. Hello everyone, um, Michael Sinclair, second, gonna play uh, Eli, and uh, just as a pre-thing for all the chat and everyone watching, I know I'm bald, it's fine, totally okay, I was bald for a year if you didn't know that at some point, I just got too much to manage, life has a lot going on right now, and I just want to have one less thing that takes a lot of time, so it's really efficient, it's great, I feel wonderful, so don't worry about it, but I'm excited for today's game. Look, I congratulate you. I, I have this fear that I have a very lumpy head under all this hair, so mine's staying put, but I, I uh, it looks great, and man, it would be nice to not worry about. <laughs> all right, last but most certainly not least this evening, DJ. Oh, hi. My name is DJ Knight. I am a uh, full-time space staff watching me on Twitch. I am a Kemba. I'm a Salian bio priest. I'm a fan of all things, and yeah, you're awesome. Thanks for coming to hang out with us. Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, I'm Eugenio, DM Jazzy Hands, and I am your storyteller. Uh, primarily tonight, probably going to be playing Master Steel Smith Bertrand, who uh, who was uh, was both a crowd favorite and, quite frankly, I had a ton of fun playing him last night. But any other NPCs we come across, I will do my best to take care of. All right, housekeeping. Thank you all so much for being here. It would not be possible for the five of us to be here tonight uh, without the, the uh, generous support of some of these folks that we're gonna talk about. So we wanna thank Die Hard Dice for supporting these endeavors into the motherlands. Uh, I know this is now the third time I get to say this, but I promise as soon as we are aware that the Musalian Skies dice set, our special dice uh, for this system are available, we will let you all know. But in the meantime, Die Hard has sent the cast some really gorgeous other sets. Uh, we have we have the Musalian Sky colors and a couple of other stuff. So we really want to thank them for their support. You can check out everything that they've got available at their website, dieharddice.com. And as I said, we'll let you know as soon as one of the things that they have available for you suddenly includes the Musalian Skies set. So thank you, Die Hard Dice. We also want to thank Blue Microphones. Uh, they have been incredibly kind to us and sent the cast uh, some hardware. I've got my, uh, my Blue Yeti here. Uh, I know, let's see, we've got at least two other blue yetis. Tanya, what are you on tonight? You want a yeti? I'm always on a yeti X. Thank you, blue All microphones. Right. That's right. So we got four of these yetis. One of them's an X. And then DJ, which one do you have? I have the baby bottle SL. Yeah. What Ooh. you think? Uh, I am a fan. I'm used to uh, not this kind of mic, right? Like uh -huh. having a condenser is 
different. I'm used to dynamic. So like, this is like different because I'm used to like being able to like put my mouth on the microphone and be fine. Mm-hmm. This one is like, no, it needs space. It needs I you like to back that. up off it. It needs you to give it 50 feet as, as right. some would say. So right. it's, it's very different than what I'm used to, but it's awesome. And I'm a fan of it. Good. Yeah. I've been using them for years with my podcast and everything else. And uh, we're big fans of them. So we're very grateful to Blue uh, for their support and for sending us all this great hardware. You can check out uh, all the stuff that they've got at all of their price points for whatever you need at bluemic.com. Next up, we of course can't go any further without thanking the folks over at Cortex by Fandom. Our system for Into the Motherlands is powered by, uh, primed by Cortex. That's what they say. Uh, And we super appreciate uh, all of the support that we've gotten from them. Uh, and all of the uh, all of the kind and generous time that they have spent working with us on this system. We are going to be doing a giveaway during the show tonight, uh, and we'll be giving away one of the Core Cortex uh, manuals. So keep an eye on the chat and mods. We'll let you all know how to enter, when to enter, uh, and who wins. So keep an eye there. But thank you all so uh, thank everybody at Fandom and at Cortex in particular so much for your support, helping us build out the mechanics for Into the Motherlands. And last, of course, but most certainly not least, thank you to Twitch. They are a major supporter of Into the Motherlands, uh, helping us out, and of course our hosts here. So we super appreciate that. We're so grateful that they've given this group of Black and POC creators uh, and artists and and awesome human beings uh, the chance to not only make something, but uh, as I keep saying, share with all of you the journey of creation, the playtesting, the writing, and all the changes that come with a game development process. All right, I think that's everybody we got to thank. Uh, so that is all the housekeeping. Shall we Shall we tell some stories? We, we ended off at quite the moment last week. So uh, should, we, should we see what happens next? Yes. Thank, thank you. <laughs> like, yes. We can all go, it's fine. I, I mean, no, yes, let's hop in. Uh, all right, so as you will, actually, rather than me telling, would anyone like to recap some part of, uh, of what happened last week? I did not give the cast a heads up that I was going to do this because I just decided. So apologies, but also not sorry. I'll do a quick wow. recap of the last like 30 seconds. Uh, yeah. Can we save the last 30 seconds till the last part of the recap? Does anyone want oh, to talk Oh, well, there's the no talk? point because I look. there's a lot of stuff that happened last week and I'm just not going <laughs> we'll, to. No, I don't no, remember we'll all the stuff you. that happened last week because there's everything that happened last week. <laughs> well, you volunteered, so I'm going to come to you at the end. But does anyone want to start at the top before we Our come back around to DJ? Heroes found out about their journey. And then they found out, you know, who they're meeting as they met a named Bertrand the Third, the best. It was awesome. And then they boarded the ship. And they were all too small for the ship. And the ship said, nah, deal with it anyways. Two of us, Invicta and Akemba, ended up on tactical. Sila decided that the captain was not the captain and that she was actually the captain. And she took the captain's seat because she's Silo 919 and that's just how she rolls. Virgin was like, okay, <laughs> Sila took the job. A good Virgin. I'll deal. Which seems about right. Everyone else took their stations. We had a solar flare. Things got weird. This week on Into the Motherlands, these are our stories. <laughs> Excellent. Like 80, Christina, you got something to add? Yeah, go on. Yeah, yes, please. And thank you. <laughs> you got anything okay. to add for us, Christina? I saw your hand up, but I, I, you know, he started voice modding and I can't resist. Y'all know that. Appreciate it. Hey, I'm down. I'm here for it. But all I know is that I got to make sure I'm pointing the right way. Uh-huh. They were talking junk about <laughs> Captain Sila 919 Uh-oh. and the North Remembers. I loved everything about that because uh, you were pointing the correct direction for my screen, but then I looked on the Twitch overlay and you were definitely pointing at the chat. <laughs> <laughs> that seems about right. It. Generally, chat doubts everything because yeah. chat. Well, you know. And then, Anybody luckily, else we have the most amazing chat on Twitch. Let's just put that out there. That's right. Let's That's just right. sprinkle it. Thank you, chat. <laughs> Michael, you got something? I heard I uh, which say is the- enough of a volunteer for me. <laughs> uh, and for the, just for the record, I, I lied, did kind of talk smack at least to Sila's face not 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 behind so you know I but guess, but I guess. did I lie think of it as talking smack or was no, I like not just, at all no no, no. 
Yeah, that was that was pretty great. That was pretty great. Yeah. Uh, so that was that was quite the recap. I loved it. Uh, and and I think all the important points are there. You all were hired by an organization called Torch uh, to go check out a water shortage essentially on this other planet. Uh, take some water up to them and see why their pipes uh, and their pumps rather aren't working anymore. Um, and so you headed aboard a ship created for uh, a much larger group of individuals than you, but it's okay uh, because the chief engineer of the ship, uh, one Master Spiel Steelsmith Bertrand, uh, gave you all booster seats. So it's cool. Ceramic booster seats. What else could you possibly need? Uh, and of course, at the end of our session, uh, the ship, not, not surprisingly, uh, ran into some trouble. There was a solar storm. DJ, did you want to do this last 30 seconds? Or did you include that in your- <laughs> No, like you, um, can we, first things first, can we give uh, a pause to Eugenio? Because Eugenio was like, oh, you covered everything. Like these specific things that were actually left out of the recap that you just did. That was look, expertly I did... done. I appreciate you for trying to leave me out. He was like, look, let me cover DJ because DJ missed a bunch of stuff. Mina, but I, I don't want to exactly call nobody the out. Specifics, but that's the point though. As you killed it, thank you for being kind to me and my recap. That was just like trying to be somewhat funny, but still like recapping the basics. And you were like, we no, got it. You, you did a little bit, but here are the specific things that you missed in your recap. Thank you very much. I want to say I appreciate it because you could have right. just been like, but DJ was butt cheeks. So let's tell you <laughs> the actual things that happened. And you didn't do that. So thank you. That's all I'm, I'm saying. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start calling people butt cheeks. Uh <laughs> so at the last bit of I now I'm all over the place. So last week, uh, at the end of last week, uh, the ship ran into a section of the space that Bertrand called uh referred to as the static, uh, that sort of is in the path of uh several, several stars worth of solar winds and solar storms. And he was fairly confident at the time uh, that you all would be able to pass without too much trouble. But as you got sort of right smack in the middle of the static, uh, you all began to, uh, I believe it was Eli that noticed that the uh, sensor station began to pop up with some alerts. Uh, and the first wave of solar winds uh, hit the ship and it didn't, go great, uh, generally speaking. Fortunately, it was a pretty pretty gentle breeze as solar winds go. Uh, but the only uh, the only one of the four of you to uh, to succeed in your dice pool role uh, was, I believe, Akemba, who did manage to uh, sort of get the ship in a slightly more favorable position. But uh, the rest of you, you know, it's fine. You've got to, you've really got to reach uh, for these controls, for these Hothray controls. Uh, and, and it's your first time on this ship, but it didn't go great. But as we get back into it this week, uh, the winds have passed, the ship got rocked uh, and you all definitely felt it. But fortunately it doesn't see, there aren't any major alarms going off, uh, you know, pressure and, and atmosphere are still there in the ship. Uh, and it looks like there wasn't any severe damage from that first uh, that first wave of solar winds. But uh, Master Steelsmith Bertrand, uh, Grand Engineer First Class, haven't said his full name yet this whole, this whole episode, uh, gets on the all call uh, and uh, as the winds subside just a little bit and Bertrand gets on the all call to make an announcement to you all and says, <clears throat> The first solar wave knocked us around a bit, eh? Shields still holding at 100%, but if we take another hit broadside like that, I may need to start diverting power to keep all of the different stations at capacity. Um, do you all think you have uh, acclimated to your stations now? There's never just one wave of solar winds. Divert all power. Now. Uh, yes, to, uh, yet, yes, Captain, of course, uh, to, to where? Scanning, 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 scanning. <clears throat> you should know it's in the manual. 
uh, 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 yeah, yeah, yes, uh, uh, of course it is, uh, Cap Captain. Uh, uh, cert cert certainly, my power will be um, uh, diverted. Uh, th thank you, Captain. Uh, Sila, what what's going on? So last week, before before you start telling us, let's remind. So last week, basically the way that this solar wind is going to work uh, and this this little uh, encounter, I suppose, uh, through the static is that everyone else is in the stations and they're going to make dice rolls, uh, dice pool rolls to try and uh, do what they can at the nav station for Eli and the two tactical stations for uh, Invicta and, and Akemba. And actually uh, Bertrand is also going to be working in the engineering bay uh, and the engine room to also assist. Uh, but basically all of this their roles, what that does, what they do is they assist you, Captain Sila 919. Uh, and so last week, at the end of last week, you had your first opportunity to really do some, some close control piloting of this ship. Uh, how did it go and how does Sila feel about it? Not the absolute best, but she's trying not to let her confidence get shaken, even though she may have read the books, but she actually has no idea what she's doing because she's never done this before. And yeah. it's um, a lot harder in practice than it uh, is in theory. Yeah, yeah. In fact, uh, so fortunately, as Bertrand said, the, that first wave of solar wind was pretty minor and none of the ship systems uh, were damaged in any way. Mechanically, what that means for us is that none of the ship systems uh, have taken any stress. However, Sila 91, Captain Sila 919, uh, since you had uh, had the chance to do your first piloting session and did not succeed, you do have now a D6 of insecure stress. So whether or not Sila would ever admit it to her party, uh, she is feeling, uh, as you said, a, a bit like perhaps the confidence of knowledge equaling experience uh, might not quite be what she expected. Uh, so as you all uh, sort of settle yourselves back into your seats, uh, things are fairly calm, but once again, uh, and it's immediately obvious for Eli and uh, Sila 919 who are <clears throat> who are in the uh, who are on the bridge of the ship it's immediately obvious when the sensor array begins uh, blinking some lights again and flashing some alerts once again um, uh, 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 Captain um... I need updates from you and Eli uh, certainly. Uh, oh, I lie. Would you like to uh, report on the sensors? I will g gather diagnostics of the engines. Um. Sure, right away. And I'm going to walk over to, because I'm at the navigation section. I'm kind of, I'm person bouncing between navigation <laughs> and Bless, the sensors. Yeah. So I'm going to go back to the sensors. Um, what can I ascertain from the sensors at this point? Um, they are very similar alerts, uh, but you realize that the the readouts that sort of indicate the uh, the strength of the disturbance and the sort of uh, size the 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 size of the wind and of the wave of wind uh, are both pretty significantly bigger this time. You're about to be rocked uh, basically from the same direction in the same way, but much harder by some much stronger winds. Um. All right. Captain Sila 919, may I suggest that we divert the power to navigation? We're going to be getting a harder hit this time. And I'm going to, as I say that, I'm walking from sensors back to navigation so that maybe I can start getting us maybe some plot a, plot a point where we can head towards so we don't get hit as hard. All right. Bertrand uh, comes back uh, as as Eli finishes his report from the sensor array, and Bertrand says, uh, uh, "All systems normal from the engine. Uh, power ready uh, at any point for diversion to damaged uh, systems, stations, and shields, Captain." I think you're muted. 
thank you for the updates. Return at once. Over. Uh, uh, was the re would you? Uh, yes, Captain. Um, Captain Silent Nine One Nine. Yeah, apologies, Captain Silent 919. All right. I love it. So, uh, Ikemba and uh, Invicta, you two are a little bit further out from the bridge. You're on sort of opposite wings, uh, well, out towards the opposite wings in your tactical stations, in your, your gunnery stations. Uh, what's, uh, what's going through y'all two's mind? Uh, you've heard all of this. All of this was presumably broadcast over the all call. Uh, so what's going on with you two? I look at Ikemba and and just go, did you not have a conversation about being luxurious with each other and kind? That is the goal. Because that did not sound like a very luxurious conversation. Well, I feel with the 919s. Behaviors and mannerisms, it may take time before this becomes standard. Mm -hmm. It's not an overnight kind of thing. And we've uh, only been on this mission very shortly. True. But flustering our poor engineer is not going to be useful. This is true, but until Captain Silent 919 understands this, the logic may not come through. Hmm. Very well. How are you feeling? Because we're just kind of here. There's nothing to shoot at. This is true. Uh, it'll be nice to utilize our tactical positions for something else, but it seems all we have at our disposal is missiles and lasers. So yes. less than useful. In this particular situation, that is. Mm, unless we find something that is causing the flares isn't just space behaving as usual. Indeed. We may wish to start a scan to look for the source of these solar flares. If we find it's a ship, then we have much more to do then, don't we? Yes, I... Just call it intuition. I feel like the cause of these flares is not normal. Then I feel we should initiate scans. All right. I'll take... I don't know directions in space in, in real life. I'll take <laughs> this quadrant. Yeah, there you go. I will take this quadrant. If you want to take the quadrant on so your like, side. <laughs> one thing that I've uh, learned uh, playing pirate games is that port... If I remember correctly, is left Correct. same letter, same number of letters. So that's port, how I remember left, it too. That's it. And then like starboard is right. So yeah, like as a port, sailor, starboard, correct. That's it. That's yep. that's how you remember which is which. So you could say like you want to take the port, and I'll take starboard. So that way we can like you take left, I'll take right. Okay, I'm glad you know this because I'm like, mm -hmm. I love that. Uh, I will take port if you could take starboard. Starboard taken. Initiating scans. Initiating scan. All right. So, yeah. That actually leads into my next question. How do I initiate scans since I've been in space before, but not necessarily in a gunnery position? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I know, I understand the basics of ships. Yeah, I would say uh, since you're in a gunnery station right now, uh, the extent of the scan that you're going to be able to do from there is going to be sort of stuff that's within the range of the ship's weapons, which are the, the lasers and missiles, uh, to see if there's anything sort of unusual that's within the range of uh, the gun's targeting systems. Uh, so you can certainly do that, and and that isn't going to require any sort of uh, any sort of check. If you Wait. wanted to do something uh, a little more expansive, you would probably have to do it from the center. Array. Cool. 
cool. So if you uh, if you both initiate scans from uh, from where you are using your uh, your targeting systems, uh, there is as far as you can tell, you know, you're both sort of uh, taking your sides of the ship, and at first you really don't see much of anything either of you. Certainly nothing that the uh, that the guns can lock onto. Uh, so no big you know celestial bodies, no other ships, nothing like that. Uh, but all of a sudden, uh, you start to get what at first looks like maybe all of a sudden a, a, something the size of a planet has appeared on either side. So both of you are getting it, uh, Invicta to, to port and, and uh, Ikemba to starboard. Uh, and you realize as it just sort of takes over more and more and more of your, uh, of your guns targeting systems that this, what you're seeing is actually the next wave of solar wind. And this time it has, it is not just energy and particles. This wind must have from both sides of the ship dislodged some space junk or run into something and it is bringing debris with it and kind of a lot of debris. So you are both aware that uh, that Bertrand was not kidding. Not only will the winds themselves be stronger, but y'all are going to have to uh, look out for specifically for debris, asteroids, you know, meteors, anything else that might have been blown at the ship by the solar winds, and it's coming from both sides. Oh, this is not good, Akemba. Not at all. I no, will. We can handle it though. Oh, we can. However, we should definitely let Bartram know, as well as our captain. Indeed. Would you like to do the honors since you found the specifics before I could? Oh, sure. This is Invicta paging Bartrand and Sila 919. Uh, uh, Chief Engineer Bartrand. Hello, Chief Engineer. I hope you are strapped in and ready to do a bit of work. Upon scanning for the source of the flares, Akemba and I discovered there's a whole lot more headed our way and it is full of debris and other not great things. Oh, these winds must be even stronger than I anticipated if we're already hitting debris from the winds strapping in. Oh boy. I tried to turn away. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yes, the winds are are more than we've already encountered. What is your recommendation as our chief engineer? Uh, uh, well, I, I think that uh, since since I since we have uh, no one on the sensor array at the moment, uh, perhaps I will divert power from there and and have it at the ready. Uh, uh, if I may, Captain Silen Nine One Nine, may I make further recommendations to your crew members? You may. Thank you, Captain Sila. Nine one nine. Tactical stations. Uh, this is, uh, as they say on Hathre, your time to shine. Uh, if you two could use uh, the ship's weapons to destroy larger pieces of debris that is heading for the ship, uh, that will greatly lessen the amount of ship's power required uh, for the shields, as minor hits will drain very little shield power. Um, navigation, uh, the larger bits that may or may not get past our tactical stations uh, should be noted on your navigational array. Uh, you can, of course, assist Captain Pilot Sila 919 by warning her where she should avoid when she steers the ship through the wave. Uh, C Captain Sila 919, uh, I don't think you know the manual, so I don't think I, I have to say that uh, for you, uh, just do your best to avoid the big pieces of space trash. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm a bit worried for, for her, for the ship, but you all are very competent and I have faith. <sighs> Bertrand, let's imagine for a moment that one had read the manual 
but had not put the manual into practice? What would you give in advice to that person? And there's sort of this, <laughs> you can almost from wherever you are on the ship, you can hear Bertrand, poor Bertrand being like, is this a trap? in his head. Uh, and after a few moments of silence, he'll say, uh, well, uh, uh, if someone were to uh, be less experienced in, in practice, I, I would say uh, that the best thing to do with a ship this size is to remember that uh, sudden movements of, I'm doing this like you drive it like a car, which is not how this works. Uh, sudden, <laughs> sudden sharp corrections of trajectory uh, won't be effective in a ship this size. The level of inertia that she has requires much longer touches. Uh, so plan ahead. Uh, a pilot should plan ahead and take the long road rather than trying to uh, dodge every bit of debris we come across. Trust in your fellow crew to take Take care of much of that. That's exactly what I would have done. Thank you for your advice. Uh, we will uh, now carry on and I will try to avoid the space trash, but I will not try to dodge around it. I will drive mm. straight through because that is what a captain would do. Yeah, excellent, uh, Captain Sila919. I look forward to this display of piloting prowess. Thank you. Okay, so the second wave of winds are approaching, uh, which means that it's time to see how we do with this wind and all of your stations. Shall we? Oh boy! Sounds good. Yay. All right, so exciting new thing that we have uh, for you all this week. Uh, you are gonna be able to see some of the dice rolls, hopefully all of the dice rolls, I don't know why I said some, as uh, we go through them. So you'll notice you've got four boxes uh, on the screen right now for Sila, Invicta, Eli, and Ikemba. Uh, and my dice rolls will be over on the left side of the screen, just below the closed captions. Uh, I'll explain uh, again what everything means once things start popping up, but we wanted to share uh, our excitement about dice rolls with you all, and this seemed like a good way since we are using a digital tool set anyway. So uh, you can almost feel the heat of this solar wind. It's completely silent, of course. I mean, you can hear, uh, you know, the noises of the ship, but the wind itself, uh, particularly for those, well, actually all four of you are in places where you have, uh, you have windows out that you can see out into space and you can see the waves coming from both sides, from port and starboard, it's eerie uh, how quiet it is. But as they get closer, you can feel almost the heat of the energy and the light sweeping towards you. And it's it's gonna be a rough one. So we're gonna start out on uh, we're gonna start out at tactical with Ikemba and Invicta, uh, since you two uh, well you'll be doing whatever you want. But per Bartran's instructions, <laughs> one thing you could do uh, is to try and target larger bits of space junk uh, to blow it up before it manages to do any damage to the ship. So uh, either one of you, let me know sort of uh, what you're putting together and what you're doing here. Um, so quick question of mm -hmm. our two talents, do either of those, um, apply in trying to shoot out the debris? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, one other thing is that, uh, this week we have added for the players, like I said, we're going to always be adding mechanics. So I've added for the players, uh, each tact, uh, sorry, each station, uh, of the ship has a couple of what we call talents or special abilities, uh, that the players are able to use that just sort of represents, you know, not only their abilities, but also the ship's capabilities. So the tactical, oops, the tactical stations, uh, basically have two, uh, two, 
abilities that they can use. One of them uh, allows for stepping up what's called the effect die uh, if you do manage to hit something with one of the missiles. Uh, and basically all that means is that the missiles are going to do more damage uh, than the lasers would. Uh, but they're also, you'll notice, the missiles are rated at a D6, so they're a little less, uh, a little less targeted than the lasers. The mm. second talent or ability for the tactical stations uh, is called target systems uh, and basically what this does once is uh, sorry what this does is if you are specifically uh in com in ship combat against another uh ship you are able to uh do more damage to a specific area of a ship if you wanted to use the lasers to specifically target for example um i don't know life support systems or well what's written in the thing uh weapons or engines uh you could do that with this by spending a plot point uh and doing more damage to a specific area now in terms of since we're not fighting ships and we're just doing space debris uh i think what we'll say there is if you want to hmm I mean, we don't have to. I was just wondering if either. I of think, apply. yeah, I think let's save that one for, you know, maybe down the road we'll deal with ship combat. And I, uh, that sounded like I was uh, foreshadowing something. I actually don't know if we're going to have ship combat anytime soon. Let's save that one. But I will say uh, the first one applies. If you two want to use missiles as opposed to lasers, the missiles are going to be, you're going to have smaller dice to add to your pool, but they will do more damage. So you all can make that choice. And that talent doesn't require you to spend a plot point. So it's just a matter of choosing, do you want D8 lasers or D6 missiles with, with more damage. Does that make sense? Yes. Great. Um, I am going to use my personality. Um, I'm going to use my knowledge weapons because, hey, those are weapons. Absolutely. Yep. Um, and knowledge because, well, I'm a high and all, and I know about these things, and I've also been studying my station. Yeah, absolutely. I like knowledge. Now, are you going to use uh, missiles or lasers for this one? Lasers. Okay, so you can add uh, on your sheet, there's also in the, like the top right, there's just that little die with the plus <laughs> sign next to it. Click on that yes. and drag in a D, you're using lasers, so a D8, an additional D8 to this die pool. Yeah, there you got go. It. All right, so you've got a D8 for uh, your distinction, your intense, your focus, you're in there, I love it. Uh, knowledge, because you have been studying your station. Uh, weapon specialization, because of course you are using weapons. And then the D8 for for using your lasers. Okay, mm -hmm. so we're gonna roll, uh, before you hit the roll, I am going to roll up the difficulty number. So what I'm doing oh here is this time, since the wind is a little bit bigger, we're gonna be using, uh, last time we did 2d6 was my dice pool for uh, determining strength or determining difficulty. This time it's gonna be 2d8. So I'm gonna roll that up. Hopefully I don't continue to roll like I did last week. Oh, okay. So I rolled a one and a three question mark. That says six, but on my screen it says three. So we'll go with six. Uh, great. <laughs> so I rolled a one and a six. So the total for you to beat Invicta is a six. That's easy enough. No, no big deal. Normally, the, one, the fact that I rolled a one would be really awesome for you all because it would give you all the opportunity to step down uh, it would give you invicta the opportunity to step down some stress that you had uh because i rolled a hitch or in this case for you it's called an opportunity unfortunately at this point you don't have any uh stress on you so uh there's not much for you to do with my with my hitch uh, but it does mean that I can't use that one in calculating the total for the difficulty so your difficulty is just a six all right, uh, cross everything. I don't roll a one on each die. Ooh. All right. Go. All right, and rolling. I the think I made it. <laughs> oh, good. I For some reason, it is the result is not popping up for me, so you'll just have to tell us what you got. Uh, um, and I'm counting only two of the four dice, correct? Yes, yeah, so you pick whichever two you want. Ah, now it's popped up. Uh-oh, okay, so we have one hitch. You've got, you can pick any of the two dice and then the one remaining die that you have will be your effect die. 
So uh, you want the effect die to be as big as possible while still, you know, hitting the uh, hitting the difficulty number. Okay, so I'm going to do a bit of a switch. Yeah, absolutely. Hmm. Um, yeah, exactly. You can drag wherever you want. There you go. Okay. So your result there is a 10, which is better than my six. So you do manage to succeed. Your effect die is a D8. So that means essentially in this case, the lasers are going to do a D8's worth of damage to this bit of, of uh, uh, space junk, whatever it is. Uh, and since you succeeded in this test, you get to describe uh, what this looks like. But I will tell you with a D8, that is enough to obliterate the particular bit of space debris that you were aiming at. All right. Um, so you know, like in most movies where someone's like leaning in the cockpit and they've got the their their shooting guns. Um, Invicta is in her stance. She's got the the handles for it, and she's just like focused. She's just getting every bit of debris she's aiming for, and it's just like this loud. Well, it wouldn't be loud if we're in the ship, but you can imagine it's like this loud smack and puff is like just smaller debris that we can easily fly through scatters around after each shot. Yes, I love that. I love that. There is bad news, though. You will yes. notice that there is that great big red one. So uh, Invicta did roll one hitch. Uh, and here's, here's what's going to happen with that. So I am going to award you a plot point. So you can add an additional plot point to your sheet. Okay. Uh, but what that means is essentially I'm buying that hitch to add some stress to your character uh... in Victa. So you're doing, you're doing exactly what you said and you're doing it really, really well. The problem though, is that it takes a lot of energy and a lot of really specific focus. Uh, and it's, you know, this is a different environment. You're used to weapons that are, you know, a little more in your hands and a little more direct contact. And so all of this just requires bigger movements, more focus, more concentration. So because of that hitch, you're going to have a D6 of exhausted stress now. <sighs> Where do I put my stress? So on the left of your sheet, you can see uh, under, there's those various buttons. Uh, the, at the top should be your plot point. You can use that to add the plot point. And then the, there's a big button that should say modify stress. Um, I am not seeing it. Oh. Uh, let's have a look. Oh, you know what? I had to close the player role. That's oh, why. There you go. There you go. All right. Modify and stress, and then you'll go to exhausted, and you'll you'll step it up to a D six. Yay! Much All like right. real life. Yeah, no kidding. All right. So what that means is that later down the road, uh, as long as you have that that D six stress, later down the road, if I think that a die roll that you're about to make uh, might be affected by the fact that you're kind of tired, I can take mm -hmm. that D six and add it to my dice pool when I roll for the difficulty. Gotcha. Okay. And yes, as as uh, I should point this out because you know we're going through a little mechanic stuff, and this is all a teaching moment. Uh, as B Dave, our our fantastic uh, lead developer, pointed out, it sucks the order that this happened in Invicta because since I rolled the hitch first, my hitch first, you can't use my hitch to heal that stress that you just got because of your hitch. If it had been the other way around, you know, it would have been a lot better for you because you could have healed it right away, but. Also, it would have been much less interesting, so I'm not that upset. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is too much like real life right now, so thanks. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you're, you're I mean, my, you should see my stress meters. They're just all D10s. Uh, all right, that's not true. I'm not corrupted. All right, so uh, that is our port side. Now, DJ, don't you give me them eyes. Uh, that's our port <laughs> side tactical station. Let's hop over to Starboard uh, with Akemba and see what Akemba's up to. Akimba's on a similar goal of targeting the nearest debris and firing on it using primarily knowledge because he learns quickly. He's been sure. paying attention as uh, Bertrand was kind of going through the systems. He was kind of like eyeing things and understanding um, or he felt like understanding what was going on around him and also the fix because in his mind, he can, he was trying to figure things out to how to make them work if they just so happen to break. But if he can figure that out, it makes perfect sense that he understands how to do everything else. Uh, 
I think those were the primary things, and he also was going to go with lasers. So, so in that case, you can add a D eight from the from the little generic die thing in the top right. I'm trying to click the eight, it doesn't want to listen to me. Uh, you may have to those dice. You may have to click and drag into your uh, okay. dice pool. Uh, yeah. All, we, we should we should say all of these uh, all of these things these sheets are in beta let's say uh, so we're all still figuring out how to do it but yeah Michael. there it is there all go. right there it is excellent and okay rolling. anything else you want to toss in before I roll up your difficulty no he didn't want to go to ham with like anything else like that's just yeah uh, that was that's it Boom. even rolled it absolutely all right oh yeah. no well i'm gonna i'm gonna roll just because i uh want to see what the difficulty would have been but that is okay i don't so I what had happened done. was you yeah, tell me he was tell me what you think it happened yeah <laughs> so it came but knowing full well what he was doing was just like all right cool i'm gonna i'm gonna click this and this and apparently uh he didn't understand the system that he was working on so he pressed the wrong button yeah on every yeah, he one did. of the things yeah he did uh so when all of the dice in a die pool are rolled up as ones that is known as a botch and botches are rough uh so here's what happens you do exactly what you said you were ready you thought what was happening you were confident you hit the buttons and just every button you hit was the wrong one. So instead of firing lasers, you fired a missile. And instead of firing it at the debris, it actually just exploded in uh, like sort of right next to the ship, uh, which means that the ship is gonna take a hit from that missile. So uh, Ikemba, we're gonna say, and in fact, I think it it explodes so close to where you are in your uh, in your tactical station uh, that we're gonna give you. I'm gonna I'm going to let's see. I don't think I have to. I gotta see how many plot points I I have to give you for this. Um, <laughs> all ones gain one complication. Oh, I don't have to pay you for this because it's a botch. Okay, so you now uh, unfortunately don't get any plot points for this. And I'm gonna say that you have a D10 injured stress. That's a D6 for the first one, step it up once for the second to a D8 and step it up again to a D10 for the third. So, so this explosion- and, and then like, okay, I'm gonna let you finish, I'm sorry. That's okay, yeah, that's right. So the, the missile blows up and just sends you flying uh, in your tactical station up against the wall and gives you a, a good knock on the head. Now, what were you gonna ask me? I was gonna say like, what do I do at this step? Is it just click and turn and then like, where do I add the D10? Yes, yeah, so you can, hit, you you can hit and turn. No, it's something you gotta do. So you can hit and turn. And then over there on the left, you should be able to see that place where it says modify stress. You see it there on the left side. If you don't, you may have to click the little X to get out of whatever screen is is there on okay, the we'll left toolbar. That. All right. So then hit modify stress, find injured, and step it up until it says D10. Ew. Yeah. Done. I'm glad I had that written here. One, uh -huh. I should have rolled the actual dies that I had right in front of me. <laughs> I would have been fine. Like, look at these beautiful. No, I. It's, you know what, uh, it's it's good. We didn't have any hitches or botches last week. So this is just a chance to show off more mechanics. It's no, fine. It's, just, it's a now sad I... situation for me internally. So like, I'm just gonna roll <laughs> to see how I, how I, in real oh, life, no. if I would have rolled this, how my situation would have plant, went, but please continue. That ain't gonna do nothing but make you sad. Dude. I know, I so that's the point. Sometimes you gotta be sad. Sometimes you gotta be sad. Like I'm just gonna Michael. accept my sadness. Wow. Okay, so uh, while while uh, Ikemba is uh, seeing the you know parallel dimension where he didn't hit all the run, <laughs> wrong buttons, uh, you, there is an all call. Uh, there are klaxons begin to go off, alarms all over the ship, and uh, uh, Chief Engineer Bertrand uh, gets on and goes, oh, 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 "Alert! Diverting power to starboard side shields. Uh, shields dropped to seventy-five percent. Uh, I can divert power to return them to normal, but uh, another hit like that will require uh, me to divert power in a significant fashion, which may hinder other stations." 
Uh, so with alarms going off left and right, the port side is a little bit more clear. The starboard side, it, there are still bits of, of large space debris coming at you. Uh, so let's head over to Eli, uh, since now you see this is sort of basically the field that you can detect at your nav station. Uh, tell me what you're doing. Yeah, um, they are going to... Um... They're going to try and take Bertrand's suggestion and find a wide, uh, wide line of, of um, flight to avoid all the um, solar flares and space junk so that I can relay that over to Silo 919. So, um, and then I'm going to make a roll. I feel like right. a little bit, I may be incorrect, but I feel like. I feel like we're coming, we're banding together in these troubled times at least. So I'm going to use We Are Community because I'm like, all right, you know, people are coming together a little bit. We got to, we got to, we got to get out through this. I'm going to use one That's of those. Right. That's right. All right. I appreciate that. Um, I'm going to use a survive because we just took a major hit. I'm worried about, um, I'm worried about Akimba. So I want to make sure that we get out of this and I'm the light bringer. Right. So I'm like, I got to make sure my peeps, we all get out. And then um, duty. I feel like right now, especially as someone mm. being a we are community, being uh, Mr. Jai, like it's kind of like my duty to like make sure I get this correct. So, sure, those are the roles I'm gonna go with. Okay. All right. Uh, now we should talk a little bit real quick about the, uh, I'm not sure that either of them are necessarily going to apply, but we, let's talk a little bit about the navigation station uh, talents or, or abilities that you've got. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so first of all, uh, since you're using guidance systems, so you basically have two uh, dice that you could add, guidance systems and star charts. Since mm -hmm. you're using this to see immediate obstacles in the way, you can toss a D6 into that pool if you would like, uh, yeah. because you're using your guidance system. So that's just yeah. a free D6 to toss. Where then the I... two, ab oh, oh uh, so that's okay. Top right, you see that little die with the plus sign next to it. Click that, it'll open Got up it. a die menu and then click and drag into your pool. Got it. Good. There it is. Now your two abilities, one of them uh, is uh, your, uh, is basically allows the, uh, the AI co-pilot to assist in whatever you're doing. Uh, so if you had decided that this was going to be, uh, that you were going to use your, uh, a fly skill rather than a survive skill, you could use the AI co-pilot to, uh, to step up uh, your fly skill. Mm -hmm. Alternatively, uh, if you are in a battle or a fight uh, in the ship, you can use evasive maneuvers uh, to avoid the ship taking any damage, uh, which allows you to uh, step down uh, the dice for tactical, which means the guns wouldn't work as well because you're, you know, helping to really maneuver and navigate sort of very sharply. So they'll have a harder time aiming, but you, one of your station skills will get stepped up. Oh. Uh, so, uh, cool. so that's those are the abilities that you have there at the navigation station. Looks like you've tossed in that D6 for guidance systems. Mm -hmm. uh, so that looks good for me. I'm going to roll my two D8s to set our difficulty number here. All right, so that is a difficulty 13. This one's a little rougher. Uh, I got a seven and a six on my D8. So we need a third, we need better than a 13 to oh, succeed man. on this one. Oh man, okay. I don't, I normally don't roll well. That's why I was like, DJ, I hope it's all ones because someone else is not rolling well. I, I hope it didn't sound mean. What you did. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll see. This is okay. I'm going to roll. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah. 14. You got it. You yeah. got it. So you hit a 14, as we can see, which is more than my difficulty. Remember, in Cortex, uh, meeting is failing, mm -hmm. right? You got to exceed. So you did that uh, just, but you did it. Uh, yeah. So that's great. So uh, you can narrate, you know, how you use the navigation station to help the ship get through uh, some of the leftover debris. Yes, uh, like before from last episode, I was, uh, I lie, uh, I was doing some uh, math and I kind of got something wrong, either the angles or uh, sp the, the speed formula. Uh, and this time I kind <laughs> of, what I did is I went back to fundamentals, made sure that my formulas were correct from fundamental principles, uh -huh. fixed that, and then redid the math to get us out of there. So I love it. Yep. And you're able to toss uh, in Sila's direction. You're able to toss uh, some, you know, some good advice there about 
where you can get through more easily, this and this and that. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you see, uh, you know, Ikemba, uh, something happened on Ikemba's side and the ship took a big hit. Uh, you can see that the, the, the bit of debris that Ikemba was, was aiming for is, is big. Uh, and you've done your part to try and, and help Sila avoid this big piece of space debris, but your nav systems are showing it to you. And the closer it gets to the ship, just the more sort of horrifying it is to you. Uh, so you did roll a single hitch, which is, which is fine. Uh, so you can take a plot point and I'm going mm -hmm. to give you a D6 of... Do you think that Eli would be more afraid or or nervous, insecure about that oncoming thing? Are they afraid of it or are they uh, worried about their own calculations because of it? I think just afraid of what it stands for, not about the calculations. We, we, okay, we went to so our then, fundamental principles. That was solid. So we're yeah, fine absolutely. on that. Absolutely. Okay. So then take a D6 of afraid stress uh, and make sure you increase your, oh, you did. Yep. Plot points up to two. Um, cool. As okay, uh, so Sila nine one Captain Sila nine one nine. Uh, oh, I didn't do this last week because it was a minor storm. But uh, Captain, uh, rather Steel. Uh, oh my goodness, Grand Chief Engineer. He's got so many titles, y'all. Bertrand. I'm gonna just say Bertrand. Uh, Bertrand is also gonna try and help you uh, by you know giving the uh, hearing allies uh, reports. Uh, he's gonna try and goose the engines a little bit, give you a little extra power so that the ship is just that much more maneuverable for you. Uh, so he's also gonna make a roll, and this is gonna be sort of silly because it's just me rolling with myself. But I figured uh, <laughs> I figured you could use the help, Miss Sila. Uh, so. Again, we're gonna do two D8s to set the difficulty. This role that I'm doing here is just to set the difficulty for Bertrand, who is gonna try and goose these engines a bit for y'all. Oh, come on. <laughs> All right, so I got two sevens. That's a 14 for the difficulty. Now, fortunately, uh, Bertrand is, uh, he's quite good here in the, uh, in the engine room. It is after all his ship. Uh, so he's quite good at things. So we're gonna give him, uh, we're gonna give him a D, his fix skill is at a D10. So we're gonna give him, where he's gonna use that fix skill so that he can tinker with the engines and boost that power. We're gonna toss that in there. Uh, we are going, he is bound and determined not only to make sure that you all arrive safely, but the water that this ship is carrying back to his home planet is going to save a lot of people there and that's very important to him so his duty is also a d10 we're going to toss in another d10 for his duty um and let's see what else oh uh and then since he is at the engines uh we're going to give him uh, a d6 Six, right? No, his is a D8. So we're going to toss a D8 in there uh, for one of the engineering station's uh, abilities. All right. So we're going to roll this up. We need a four, we need a 15 or better. No whammies, no whammies and stop. Okay. So I got uh, my best possible combination with two dice. I rolled an eight, a five and a two. Oh, uh, got it. Uh, so I got an eight and five and a two. Eight and a five added together is 13, which means I am too short of what I need. However, just like all of you, Bertrand has some plot points available to him since he's an important GMC. And one of the things, uh, GMC is a uh, 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 game master character. We don't use game master, we use storyteller, but it's essentially an NPC for Cortex. Uh, one of the things that you can do by spending plot points is include more dice in your total. So if I were to include that third die there that rolled a two into this total, that would suddenly give us a total of 15, which is just enough to succeed. So Bertrand is gonna uh, spend one of his plot points and bring that total up to 15, which means that he gives you just the little goose of energy silo that you might need uh, to that you might need to get us out of this sticky situation uh, and you can feel the power of the ship increasing. So, Miss Sila 919, Captain of the Wistful Wish, tell us what you're doing. Keeping a very straight face so that no one sees it internally. 
I am trying my best. Going through all of the systems within myself. I'm studying all possible courses of action. Bertrand. Uh, yes, Captain Sila 919. I'm sorry. Are we clear from what you uh, can see? Is there is if if you were, say, a pilot of a ship and you needed to figure out your next course of action, what would it be that you would do? And I will defer to your wisdom. Um, uh, Captain Sila 919, you know exactly what to do. Big, slow movements. Uh, I lie. Our navigational officer has provided you with an outlay of what is out there. Our tactical stations have done their best to clear as much debris as possible. You know what to do, Captain. I believe in you. All right. I'm going to continue to direct course ahead. Okay. Do I All see right. any incoming objects? Yeah. So, I mean, you can definitely still see uh, the biggest thing that you see is what Eli pointed out to you uh, from his examination of the navigation array, uh, which is that great big thing off to starboard. So, uh, you know, as far as you can see, that's sort of the big thing that you have to try and avoid. You're going to want to take a nice big arc uh, to port to avoid that big honking asteroid that is coming right at you. And would it be worth it to have Invicta fire on it? Or would we uh, only create smaller pieces? Well, Invicta spent her time firing on ones on the port side. So that side is now clear for you to go to. Ikemba is the individual on starboard side. Uh, and unfortunately he missed. He was so hit. this is, he, uh, yes. Well, he was hit by his own missile, but yes. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so basically uh, what's happened now is with Ikem, no, sorry, with uh, Invicta, Eli and Bertrand's success, I'm gonna give you some bonus assets to use in, the, in this dice pool that you're gonna put together as you try and uh, pilot the ship through this wave, this, this solar wind wave. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, so let's start putting right. together a dice pool for you and then I'll, I'll give you the uh, assets that you can add once you've done yours part. So I'd like to use my ship's computer. Yep, great. So let's that see. one is a D6. Yep, so we get a, uh, let's see, where is your, here we go. All right, yep, so we got a D6 in there and you can drag that uh, again from the little die with the plus sign in the top right. You can take a D6 and drag it into your dice pool. And then what uh, distinctions or skills or what else are you gonna use in there? Um, again, I'm going to pull another six and use my weaponized braids, but I'm going to use them as a, like, to boost my navigation. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. We'll see how it goes, and then you can tell us what it looks like, depending on how this roll goes. Just let me have this, okay? Oh, I am going to um, let you have it. It's just a matter of how. <laughs> it's fantasy. <laughs> um, so we're going to do the weaponized braids. I'm going to use that to boost that. And then Great. I would like to use my, oh, can I do my power and do a D10? Yeah, sure. Just tell me what, what it is about uh, the, the value of power. But yeah, absolutely. Because if I'm able to pull this off, then I will gain respect power be a respect of sure power. sure okay i like that i like that uh okay right. now in uh, anything else from your sheet do you want to add to this dice pool any skill yeah. that you want to add i would really like to see how cool this turns out actually okay okay now I will give you a choice for your assets from your fellow crew members. You can either take 
uh, since you, there were three different successes, you can either take three D6s and we can treat each of those assets as its own asset, or we can sort of roll them all together and say that since three stations were so successful in helping you, we can step that asset all the way up to an additional D10 to toss in. So do you want to add three D6 or one D10? I will take three D6. Okay. So you got a great big pool that you got going on here. Now, while you do that, I am gonna get my dice pool ready uh, for, oops, let's see. I'm gonna have to clear this. I'm afraid it's gonna clear stuff out for the screen. Sorry if it does. Uh, all right, so we've got two D8s because uh, this is, you know, a difficult situation. Now we also, Sila, you started this dice pool uh, uh, construction with a D6 of insecure stress. So I'm gonna use that and I am going to add a D6 to my dice pool. Uh, since you're feeling a little unsure of yourself, Bertrand tried to pep you up and gave you some answers, uh, but you're still feeling a little unsure. So we're gonna add that D6 to my roll for the difficulty. All right, so here comes my roll for the difficulty. And okay, so we got a 13 for the difficulty. So I can go, I have a D6, D6, 10, D6, D6, D6. That's it, lots of D6s yeah. and that D10 from power. I love it. Go on and roll that set and let's see what comes up. Okay, so nine. So you are currently four, nope, five short of uh, of the difficulty. And unfortunately, I think you've only got one plot point at this point, right? Uh, so you could spend as many plot points as you want to add more dice to your total, but since you've only got one and none of those die read a five, uh, we're not we're not gonna do it. It's not gonna quite make it this time. So uh, the Sila is piloting the ship uh, and why don't you tell us what it looks like with the braid and everything, and then I'll narrate what actually happens outside the ship. So from the back, one of her silver braids comes forward and goes into the console of the ship and it starts to search for alternate routes and she begins to drive the ship with this one braid so that she can also focus on trying to figure out a new navigation route. Yes, absolutely. So we watch as Sila's braid plugs in uh, and, and you can almost, you can tell, well, Isla, I guess you're the only one who's in immediate visual contact with her, but if you were to look back, uh, you could see that she's sort of, uh, she seems sort of split in her attentions uh, and, and you do, you know, you, so you all feel the ship begin to pull to port uh, and, and, Kemba in particular, you're right there. You can see the big asteroid that was coming for the ship that you tried to, to fire at. And the ship begins to turn and it just, if you're gonna make it, it's gonna be by a hair's breadth. We're not gonna make it, we're not gonna make it, we're not gonna make it. And the tail part of the ship gets smacked by this asteroid and you all can feel the ship get lurched over as it begins to spin uh, from the hit. Uh, from this massive asteroid. Uh, so the ship this time, this was a much bigger hit. The ship this time is going to take some stress itself, uh, which we're gonna say this time, since it hit the tail end of the ship, we're gonna say that the engines now have a D6 of stress uh, from engines. Eesh. Gotta write this down. Uh, the engines have a D6 of stress. They're still functioning. It's okay. They haven't been taken out. You're, you're still there, uh, but they, they have some damage to them at this point. Uh, and, uh, and Bertrand comes on over the all call and says, oh, well, that could have been s so much worse. Uh, so well done, everyone. We're almost through. And you can hear in the background, uh, you can hear alarms going off and you can hear sort of like steam hissing. Clearly there's a lot going on, but Bertrand oh. uh, took the time to come in and let you all know it's gonna be okay. It could have been much worse. 
what are we all thinking and feeling? How are we all doing? Because you can see, uh, I lie, you can see, and 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 Bertrand can relay this to everyone, uh, that the alarms on the sensor array are not off yet. It looks like there may be one final solar wave coming for the ship. Uh, so how are you all feeling at this point? Tell me what's going on. Um, Invicta's trying not to freak out. Because uh -huh. that 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 tailspin is kind of freaking her out. Because she's like, "We're in space. We might die." She's not saying it out loud, but like the wheels are turning, and she's got like a a white knuckle grip on the handles of her weapon, and she's just like staring out there, like, "This is not how I thought I would die. This is not how I thought I would die." <laughs> Well, if you're alive tomorrow, you go feel it in them shoulders after holding on to your right. life like this. <laughs> I'm going to need like somebody to be like, you can let go of that now. <laughs> Try your one by one. It's yeah. what I look like when I'm having to drive within New York City limits. Um, <laughs> and they're done that's, that. <laughs> yep, that's, that's what Invicta's doing right now. <laughs> Uh, all right, yeah. Uh, Ikemba, how are you doing over there? You've picked yourself up, you're injured and it's not insignificant, but you're, you know, you're still able to function at this point. You haven't been taken out. How you doing over there? He's like taking stock of what's injured and trying mm. to figure out what is hurt. Mm. And also kind of like tempted to use his bio priest abilities to like try to like get himself back to normal. But he's also like concerned, like, all right, I I just tried the thing. It didn't go too well. Should I try? And that's that's like one of his regular internal issues is should he use his abilities to try to better himself or should he just accept what life has kind of dialed toward him? Right. Yeah, well, it's quite the choice. And and it's all the more difficult because I think the main sort of point of injury, uh, I think it was a head injury, I think as you got flung to the side uh, when the missile exploded, I think you you know sort of knocked your head. So it's all just trying to, to hone back in and focus and decide what's next. Yeah. Uh, is he going to make a decision in this moment? Or no. is he He's still just like kind of okay. pondering whether or not he should. Yeah, okay, all right. Uh, Captain Sila919 and Eli, you two are on the bridge. Uh, why, what's going on there? Um, <clears throat> for Eli, they, um, they're a little bit overloaded um, trying to navigate and uh, read the sensors. And uh, they're also concerned about uh, Akimba because they know that starboard side took a hit and mm. them being a light bringer, knowing like, Sometimes it's better to have people up uh, so that everyone works at efficiency, just taking the time to get someone up and going so everyone's up. So um, they're concerned about two stations in Akimba. So they're, they're a little bit stressed, like that afraid stress is kicking in a little bit of, um, you know, having to handle so many things and be on top of it. So that's that's where I'm at. Yeah. All right. Anything from from Captain Silent Nine One Nine? I know it's you know you were you were already worried, uh, and now you know this second time you you did okay, but the ship got still got hit. How's Sila feeling? But she is prepared and trying to figure out a way that she can also run. She's still plugged in to the console, so she's trying to figure out if she can go and run the sensor area as well. Oh. Interesting. Uh, yeah, I think Silas sees how it might be possible. Uh, I think the the trick there is that sh her attentions are going to be split, uh, and so that might uh, that might make things on both ends a little more difficult. But it would also give you the opportunity to have even one more asset given to you, right? If you succeed over at sensors, then your dice pool, your your attempt there as pilot might be that much better. So up to you if you want to give that a try. Basically, uh, mechanically, since uh, there's no need for me to keep this a secret, if you do that, uh, I will toss in an additional D6 to my dice pools for you to just represent the split attention. Uh, so I'll just have one additional die to roll uh, in my difficulty set. Mm. Make it so. All right, 
Okay, so Sila gets up then, and uh, and and is it just like the braid just sort of is as long as it needs to be? Like it's a nice like coiled up inside somewhere cable that just stretches, or is it Negative something else? Ghost Rider, another one would just come out. Yes, of course it would. That's why there are so many. There are yes. multi purposes. So instead, that's why I don't this. My focus would not be as split. I would just uh-huh. be using. I would have more more windows open if you will i got you more tabs more tabs going more tabs okay i see that i see you okay yeah absolutely so uh captain silas android life (laughs) android life (laughs) so captain sila uh is gonna sort of take on two stations there uh to see if if she can't make things a little better for her uh and since you're now plugged into sensors captain sila 919 you can see this next wave looks about the same as the last carrying more debris. This time though, uh, rather than coming from port and starboard, uh, the the solar wind is coming at you directly uh, head on. And there is one particularly large bit of space debris that is coming right for you all. Uh, so between sensors, navs, and tactical, we will just have to see what this final wave of solar wind looks like but perhaps we'll hold off and make a little bit of a cliffhanger before the break. I don't know, maybe I like it. Uh, So we're gonna take a quick break here uh, for halftime. Everybody get up, get some water, get a libation if if that is your thing. Uh, Take a bio, stretch, do all of that. And we'll be back to finish out the solar storm to see how we do and how the Wistful Wish fares in their trip through the static. Thanks so much for hanging out. We'll be back with you so shortly. Don't go anywhere, Uh, do what you need to do and we'll see you back soon. Thanks everybody.
except maybe just for a second, just a reminder, everybody, we are going to be doing a giveaway for a core rule set of Cortex uh, a little bit later. Should be coming up uh, definitely before the end of tonight's stream. So keep an eye on uh, the chat. Mods, of course, will give you a heads up how to enter, when to enter, and all that good stuff. Uh, but you too can get your hands uh, on a on. set of these rules. Uh oh, hold on. Chat is saying you're muted. Chat is saying I'm muted. Uh, hi, everybody. Can you hear me now? Oh, there's sound again. All right, well, good. I just wanted you all to see how much you could understand uh, with me talking like this, uh, but no sound, no. Uh, welcome back. Hope you all had a good break. Um, and uh, here we are back. A quick reminder, we are gonna be doing a giveaway later this evening for a uh, Cortex rule book. Uh, so keep an eye on the chat. Mods will let you know when we're starting that up and uh, how to enter in the chat. Uh, but you too can get your hands on these awesome gaming rules. Uh, so keep an eye there for that. Whew, what a start to today. This solar storm has been going. It has been rough on this ship. Every single player has, or every single character has a bit of stress, uh, some worse than others. Akemba got a real smack to the head uh, after an unfortunate missile fire uh, and everyone else is feeling either a little bit afraid, a little exhausted, a little insecure, but we must soldier on because the final wave of solar winds uh, is coming towards the ship it is also carrying with it an asteroid of uh, substantial size that is heading right for the front of the ship head on. So there are alarms going off. Uh, you you can hear uh, you can hear alarms sort of from every area of the ship, but mostly from from the rear of the ship where the engines uh, and engineering is. Bertrand has come on the all call to let you all know that that it's it's okay. It was it was a blow, and the engines took a little bit of damage. But he's gonna he's gonna reconfigure shields, uh, and we just have to make it through this last wave. Uh, and, and off we go. So as we left, uh, Captain Silent 919 had used her braids to uh, jack into both the pilot seat where she has been, but also to the sensor array in the hopes that maybe that yet, yet one more piece of, uh, of added information will make sure that the ship gets through this final wave eh, relatively unscathed or, or at least unfurther scathed. Uh, so, asteroid coming, waves of light and heat coming behind it. It almost looks, if it wasn't such a dire situation, uh, it almost looks to all of you, because all of you can see this from where you are, it almost looks like this big asteroid is surfing a wave, a space wave of light. You can see the solar wind, all of the energy and particles are creating this literal wave, it looks like, and this asteroid is being pushed forward towards you all on it. Here it comes. Where are we beginning? You, you, you've all got work to do. Uh, so uh, who wants why? to who wants to start us off? Uh, I think I'll, this... I'll go. Um... All right, yeah, I like, tell us what's up. So now that I see Sila 919 assisting with looking at the sensors, I'm going to try and memorize some key places on the map that I know that is a best place to navigate depending on what situation they, uh, that uh, Sila 919 gives me. So I'm going to stay, I don't know, active on comms. I don't know what we have to like keep that on, but I'm going to do that. And I'm going to run towards um, Akimba where they are at starboard to check up on because I know they took a big hit. Uh, uh -huh. So I'm going to be heading over there to uh, see what's ascertain the situation, see what's going on with the Kimba, and then ready to respond to Silent 919 uh, if they need directions as far as what they report to me. So okay, that's what I'm doing. I love that. Uh, so in terms, so which do you, uh, do you want to sort of chart out possible plans based on, on Captain Silas' information first, or do you want to go check on a Kimba first? Um, I guess Akemba first, because if we take another hit like that on that side, it'd probably be worse off than what uh, Silent 919 might be able to immediately in dodge. So I'm going to sure. try and make sure that uh, Akemba's up and, and running. Yeah, all right. And you've got, you, you think that you've got, I mean, it's big, but it is far away, which is maybe even more frightening, because that means it's even bigger than it looks. 
But that said, it looks like you've got time to run to tactical and and do that and still get back before the wave hits. So okay. uh, in in that case, we'll hold off on your roll, but let's have you head over to Akemba uh, okay. and you two can uh, can sort of interact there for a minute. So Akemba, you're getting yourself back into position, and Eli comes uh, sort of running. They come running up to your to your station. Um. Oh, hello, Eli. Hello, Akimba. Um, let me see. Looks like you've been hurt. And I'm going to look at, they call them battle signs, but I'm going to see if there's any like, like fluid leaking out of their ears, if they have like raccoon symbols on their face or anything uh, of the sort that shows like they're heavily concussed. Uh, and then try and maybe use any light bringer ability to, to help them out that way so we can get them back on defenses. Uh Ikemba, I mean, you know, you can definitely see that Ikemba is a, a, a little bit shaken up. Uh, you can see some, some uh, already a little bit of, of bruising uh, and some blood on, on one side of his head uh, from what is clearly some sort of head wound. Uh, Ikemba, here is Eli, uh, a, a bit surprisingly that they've shown up. Uh, what are you, what are you, how are you responding? I'm just um, kind of like checking over. As I was like, kind of like just rubbing, mm -hmm. lightly touching to see if there's anywhere that's like where the tender points are on his head. And it's just more like, I found <clears throat> a large lump in the rear over here, but I'm trying to decide if I should fix it or test it. Um, that's a good choice, but um, can you focus right now? I can just wondering if if I should try to do better. There's no time to think about that right now. Um, and I'm gonna start getting them up to head towards the defense station. Um, Cause they're kind of, they're kind of, at, it seems out of it. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm just trying to read what's going on. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes if you give someone like a point of focus, at least they can maybe just focus up for a second, take care of something. So sure. I'm going to get, get uh, Akimba up. We, ne I, we need you to focus really quickly. I, I don't know how to use any of this. Um, and I'm going to help them up to the station uh, to see if they can get back on it um, and see if they're okay. Yeah. I'm going to like have a seat at the station and it's not like life-changing injury. So uh, a chemist can get, kind of sit down and start focusing and just, I th I've got this. I, I appreciate your assistance. Uh, I believe in it too. And uh, once I know that they're sitting down and, and, and say that they got this, I'm going to head back over to navigation. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right, so Eli headed over there to check on Ikemba. While Eli was checking on Ikemba, uh, Invicta or Sila919, how are you two preparing for the final wave? Uh, I'm I'm looking out through through the viewport, mm -hmm. and I and I did notice and hear what was going on with Eli and Ikemba. Yeah, and I I turn. How bad is your injury? I'll be fine. It's, I don't think I'm too out of sorts. Just it's a heavy bump on the noggin is all. And that is a good way to have a concussion and not know. Yes, yes, hell. Mm hmm. I look inside and see what I can find. Mm, what did you say about kindness and luxury? Indeed, I am. I'm sorry. I appreciate your. Your support. Thank you. I give him a nod and I look at Eli. You're a medic, yeah? Yes. I'd appreciate if you'd keep an eye on this one. He's, well, hard-headed is the truth, but he very much will take care of others before himself. It is true and I see that and it will be done. Thank you, Invicta as I'm walking my way back over to uh, navigation. You're welcome. And uh, I'm, I'm checking my scans, I'm looking out 
and uh, I am ready for that next big wave. Right. All right. Uh, Silent Before anything else happens. Oh, yeah. Go uh, ahead, Akimba. Akimba kind of yells to Isla, thank you again for your support. I feel I might have not shown a proper appreciation, and that is unacceptable. Of course, let's make it through this first, and Indeed. things can happen afterwards. Um, and I'm just really happy that everyone we're, we're getting everyone back up and running, and and we're gonna let's we're gonna try and get through this. <laughs> I love that we're taking this moment to remind Akemba that while we must be luxurious to each other, we must also be luxurious to ourselves. I love this, uh, Sila nine one nine. Anything you're doing in preparation for the wave, we'll get to the die rolls uh, shortly. But anything you're doing in this little in between time, while uh, while these three are are seeming to check in on each other. So while they are getting familiar with each other, she's still scanning and checking all of the new navigation coordinates oh. that were sent over by Eli. Mm -hmm. And as she kind of zones in on these two things, making sure she's steering, she's still steering the ship and also reading over the nav reports. So she calls on a private line to Bertrand. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, Captain Sila 919. This line is private. And, uh, understood, yes. I'm... This conversation is private. Oh, oh uh, yes, uh, of course, uh, understood. Do you understand there will be consequences? I don't take time. Uh, never, never mind, never mind, never mind. Uh, uh... I was abrupt. Tell me about, tell me about your home and why it's worth risking your life. To... Well, uh, uh, Hathoray is a, a beautiful place in these in these days where technology and and space travel and 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 all of these things are so ubiquitous throughout the galaxy. Uh, Hathoray is a place where uh, one can escape much of that. Uh, we obviously have uh, space travel and technological capabilities, but in general, it is a simple place. It is green and full of farms and simple lives. They are, we are happy in our lives, in our beauty, in being able to provide the system with much needed organic food matter. It's difficult to explain, but well, it is my home, Captain Sila, 919, so, sorry. Uh, would you not wish to do all you could to protect the place that you come from? I would, and that's why I'm here, that's why I'm trying to do my best. But if you keep talking about your home, it does bring comfort to me. Because mm. I am competent and cap capable of this. And um, back to your station. Hang up. Uh, of course, oh, well, uh, all right. Uh, yeah. Okay. The solar, the third and final wave of solar wind and asteroid is upon us. What are we doing? Uh, if we, uh, I'm happy to go in any order, uh, with the exception that obviously, uh, Sila, your dice pool from the, from the pilot seat, uh, should go last so that we can add assets from everyone else to it. Uh, so who wants to kick us off in trying to get us through this last wave? Oh, 
Uh, well, I'll, you hit I'll the go. mic, DJ. Oh, okay. DJ. Nice. You, uh, Michael, DJ <laughs> said, Michael saved you. <laughs> Thank you. You got, got it. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I think that's great because you're coming up with contingency plans from NAVs, right? Is that what you said? Uh-huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, do it. Let's let's hear it. All right. Um, I feel like, hmm, this is going to be kind of weird here. Um, We're in space with a giant asteroid bearing down on us. Be as weird sure. as you want. <laughs> um, Miss Ajay being like the combination of, of two beings, maybe that, that was kind of like got them to feel inspired to go check out Akimba and come back to navigation and do those things. So mm -hmm. I'm going to use the culture as far as one thing. Um, yeah. And so I'm going to try and do that. Yeah, sure. Um, I think right now, although it's not like a fight like me against some person, this is like a fight for all of us to get out of here. You know, I'm in that in that like medic lightbringer zone of like, okay, need to help someone else, need to get back on focus. And I feel like that's like a flight or fight response in a sense. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna use one of those. And then um, let's see, uh, I ready? I don't know if I used balance last session, um, but I guess we'll just use uh, knowledge. I think knowledge for this one. Oh no, I used lounge last time. So balance, I think I'll use balance in, in kind of tandem of um, the message I thing of just trying to find balance oh. and comfort with it for everybody sure. and us, so. Sure, worrying um, do, about do. your companions, but also staying focused enough to, yeah, okay, I like that. Yeah, um, right. and then here, I'm going to use the talent, uh, if I can, the AI co-pilot. I know it's gone for a little bit, and I know I plugged in some equations, but I'm also going to try and lean on the support of the, the AI co-pilot. Yeah, to, for to sure. sure. So uh, you're going to use, uh, Do you? would you have a rating in fly? Uh, I have, it says, you are going to see, if, oh, uh, in my actual character sheet. Let me see that. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Uh, skills that's one i have not picked up but i will in the future <laughs> okay would you would you remember we've all got uh skill step points so do you want to yeah. from our character creation do you want to spend uh it, frankly any number of those points to to step that up now and then you can also use this talent sure yeah absolutely okay so i think it makes sense with everything that you've said uh obviously Eli has some experience on ships uh sorry before we do this let me just remind everyone that's watching so if you all remember from session zero a bazillion years ago uh we saved some some character build points so that as we learned more about these four characters, we could uh, add to their mechanical uh, character sheets, uh, just a chance for us not to make all of the decisions locked in at the very beginning. So what we're talking about doing now is spending some of those leftover points for Eli uh, to step up their fly skill. It makes sense to me that Eli, I mean, from everything that you've said, Eli has some experience uh, mm -hmm. on ships, obviously not in tactical, maybe in piloting, definitely in navs. So how, just how good is, or how much experience does Eli have? We talk in D6, D8, do we want to get get really out there and go d10 i think a d8 i think that they've been on some uh missions or some sort of humanitarian aid things where for some reason or the other pilot went missing or like something happened to the pilot and they had to like take over so uh, that's why kind of in a pinch they can fly and they can fly most things like not they haven't fought, flown in combat but they've flown in times where it wasn't so right, right. Uh, okay so yeah so that's two points two of your character build points uh, that you'll spend to get uh, your fly up mm -hmm. to a d8 uh, and if you'll do me a favor and make a note of that and then remind me when we're done tonight so we can let the folks know yes i'm taking notes today so that will happen appreciate you then so your fly normally is at a d8 your navigation station has this as you said this talent ai copilot which says if you're involved in an, a fly test or contest and you are because you're using your fly skill for this test mm -hmm. then for the remainder of the contest you can step up your fly skill so your experience combined with the capabilities of this ai copilot you actually are going to get a d10 to okay. add to your to your dice pool d from you then then stepped up perfect very cool okay anything else that seems to cover most yep. things 
Yeah, that's it. All right. So I'm going to roll here. So uh, the wave itself, uh, it's configured differently. Uh, and there's just the one big one instead of the two medium sized ones from the side. Uh, but it all sort of evens out in the wash. So I'm going to remain at my 2d8 <laughs> base dice pool for these difficulties. You do have a d6 of afraid stress. So I think your nerves are going to affect this a little bit. So I'm going to add a d6 to my dice pool. Sounds uh, good. And let's see what happens. Uh oh Ooh, no wow okay well so i got a difficulty of 14 my total cool, cool, was a cool, cool, 14 cool, cool, cool. so you need a 15 or better which you can totally hit with an yeah. eight a six and a ten sure. uh i will say remember uh you do have at this point two plot points you can mm -hmm. use them for all kinds of things you can use them to create a temporary asset you can use it to add more dice to your total so just keep that in mind uh i'm gonna use uh we need to just make it out of here. So I'm gonna use I'm gonna use one of those uh, plot points. Um, okay. Now, if you so. if you want to use it to add more dice to your total, to have more than two dice in your total, you can mm -hmm. make that decision after you've rolled. You don't have to. Call okay. That ahead perfect. 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 Okay. So I'll roll what I have now, which is a d8, a d6, a d10, another d10. So that's it. All right. Ooh. Let's have a look. I believe in you, Eli. Here we go. Mm. <laughs> okay, well. One off, two off rather, yeah. Uh, two off, so the good news is uh, you've got that D6 that's reading a three. So if mm -hmm. you want to spend one of your plot points, you can add that D6 to your total, making it 16 and making you successful. The trick mm -hmm. though is that you've also rolled a hitch. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have some fun with that later. But yeah. uh, you can spend a plot point to bring that total up to 16. I will you. do that. How do I do that on the application? Do I just drag it over? Uh, drag the D6 over to the total box and then just uh -huh. make sure that you reduce your total plot points by one in the top left over there. Oh yeah, perfect. I'll get that, easy. Okay. All right, so you managed to succeed. What does it look like? You're in there, you're creating contingency plans. If Tactical manages to blow up the asteroid, if they don't, if they only split it and it turns into two, you've got all of these plans. What mm -hmm. does it look like when Eli is sort of going through this? Uh, it looks crazy. Like if you look at their navigation station, not only do they have, um, not only are they planning plotting points with um, degrees of, of flight and, and power and acceleration and all these formulas up. They also have like another formula up of probability and outcomes and just like, just, just chaos. It's chaos math happening and it's wonderful <laughs> to see. But that's what, that, if you look at their station, that's what, that's what they are doing at the moment. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. So you are able to do that. You've got really specific plans that you can give to uh, to Captain Sila. Uh, so that's gonna be, you know, one step of an asset for her when it comes up to her piloting. Now you did roll another hitch. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna buy that hitch. So you're gonna get a, a plot point back. So you're back to where you were before. Basically, okay. I'll give you back the one that you spent on me. Uh, but again, sort of like with, uh, sort of like with, names Invicta uh you really are buckling down you know you're still at some point at in some part in your in your brain you're, you're thinking about uh Ikemba and and his injuries uh and really just making sure uh making sure that that everyone is there but it just becomes kind of a lot and it is a, it is a drain so rather than stepping up your afraid stress i think i'm just going to give you a d6 of exhausted stress as well okay um perfect so uh that is that we've got contingency plans who is next um well if akemba doesn't go i'll go Oh wait! <laughs> wow. I'm always right. giving it a minute or two. Like I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let the dice like play right. for a little settle. bit. I feel like if settle. I go next, my dice don't wow. like me. So I want to give these dice time to like settle. These digital dice. <laughs> That's right. Wow. That's right. Actually, BRB. Yeah, do it. <laughs> he's he's really go go do some some juju. Make sure the digital dice are working for him. Meanwhile, Invicta, what's going on with you? Um, so quick question: Are we able to see the debris? Like we're in the midst of this third wave? Oh yeah, oh yeah. All right, I'm going for the biggest piece of debris I can see. Once again, using lasers. Okay. I'm yep. going to use my same dice pool. 
All right, so the high and all because you know about your culture is deep into weapons. Uh, what else was oh, in there? Interesting. Your specialization, right? Yes. So knowledge. Yep. No. Great. And add that D6 for late or D8 for laser, correct? D8 for laser. Uh huh. All right. I am ready when you are. All right. So uh, I'm going to toss in my 2d8 dice pool. You also have a d6 of exhausted stress. It's just a lot to manage these guns. So I'm going to toss that d6 into mine as well. And let's roll up the difficulty. Here comes mine. It's a, it's a little better. It's a 13. Uh, 13 is the number to beat. So we need a 14 or better. Fortunately, mm, you also God. have a couple of plot points. So, you know, we got room to, to breathe a little bit. I believe in you. Here we go. <laughs> oh my God. Oh no, wait, I can't see. It hasn't come up for me. I don't know what it is. Oh, wait, that reaction. Ah! <laughs> wow. Oh, it's taking sweet time. Wait, I still can't see it. Would you I'm... like me to just tell you how bad it is? I kind of would, yeah. Oh no, it just popped up. Oh Jesus. Oh, they ain't no help in that. They ain't no help in that. Now, here's the thing though. Here's I know, right? But hey, at least it's not a full botch. So the trick here is that since it's not a full botch, if I want to give you stress for all of those hitches, I have to give you plot points for each one, right? So okay. I can either give you a ton of stress, but you're going to end up with three additional plot points, or I can not be quite so mean to you and maybe only <laughs> use one or two of them uh, and you get less plot points, but you're also less uh, less sort of exhausted. So I think that's what I'm going to do Ooh. in this case. I'm going to, I'll buy one of those uh so you okay. can take one more plot point and then i'm just gonna say we're gonna step up your exhausted stress to a d8 uh okay. so you know again it's just getting these guns into position uh you know with that with the blow that the ship took on one side it's just everything's a little slower a little more difficult um mm. and so you fire off but you just you know you you blast off a little chunk of of one of the bigger asteroids but it, it's not nearly enough to uh to get the ship out of danger from it at least not on your own there is another tactical gun station uh eventually uh what's what's invicta what's what's how how is she responding um she just can't believe she screwed up so badly she's just like i've trained and 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 she was just like, I was ready. I'm trying to make sure we survive this. Or she sees the glancing blow and just a little bit of shard. She like just sits there and she like actually just puts her head in her hands. It's like, no, just, I, I refuse to accept this. <laughs> this is not okay. Yeah. DJ, yeah. I took your roles, by the way. Curse you and your inevitable betrayal. <laughs> of stepping away. <laughs> All I did was get a refreshing beverage, and apparently my rolls are gone. I am very concerned. <laughs> your well, no, I got your bad roll. Do you want to know what I rolled when I had to beat what a fourteen? A fourteen, yeah. What'd you roll? I got three ones and a two. These are our stories. <laughs> I can't stand you. Seems I like can't that's, stand the, that's just the standard it. for today. That is just today, apparently. I do not like it. Same way. Oh. I, I would have like get it look random number generator but also could I maybe stop rolling above 13 for everything that'd be anyway, great I would love to would roll be awesome better than a three is all I'm saying <laughs> next time I don't care I'm rolling the real dice that die hard yeah I, I feel that than us <laughs> I feel like while you talk about it I'm just gonna get mine ready just in case uh-huh uh-huh all right I so think you uh, just roll them I, I mean, the just just double the ch check. Roll if I, if you're going to use them, roll them now. Make sure they're not, you know, feeling the the digital energy here. I rolled them um, earlier, and I got a one, a five, and a six. Better than a one, a one, and a one. So <laughs> like, these die are at least decent and somewhat here for me. Like, right. I don't, right. 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 I don't trust the digital dice. Is all I'm saying. Uh, I mean, I, I don't believe blame our. You. I believe our captain was raising her hand. Y yes, Miss Silent Nine One Nine. Okay, as this is a new system and I'm still figuring it out, yeah. I do have a question. So because she just rolled that hitch, right? Yeah. So as the captain, I have the talent 
and at the talent that is in order and the activation is one of the other stations players rolls a hitch one on any die spin a plot point that station ignores the hitch and re-rolls the entire pool but rolls of one or two become hitches instead absolutely if you want to use that you absolutely can all right, so does that mean I re-roll all of that? So you're, yeah, so here's Make what happens. So, so Sila, you're giving, uh, you are giving a direct and specific order to Invicta uh, to activate this. So what are you, tell me what you're, what, what you're, uh, what, what you're saying over comms to Invicta. Brain just glitched. <laughs> Invicta, make it happen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's just like she okay. like lifts her head up like uh I'm sorry what but but somehow the authority of Silent in the captain though you may not recognize it consciously something about it just gets at your core uh, and you can re-roll that dice pool <laughs> uh, now I will I, say go ahead go ahead I was gonna make now a I'm terrible concerned. joke. I was gonna make a terrible joke about Sila being a top, but I'm gonna I'm gonna be good. <laughs> eh. Okay, so you're gonna roll it again. the The difficulty stays the same. Unfortunately, I already cleared it, so it's not up on the screen. But we know what it is. Uh, difficulty stays um, the same. You need a fourteen or better. The trick, though, here is that hitches are ones and twos. So you get another shot at it, but we don't want to see any ones or twos. Lord, uh... let's go. All right, so I've got an eight for my distinction, eight for knowledge. I'm sorry, eight for eight for no, ten for knowledge, and eight for the laser. That's it. Ooh, oh my goodness, is this better? Yeah. Um, I did not make. I did not quite make it, but it's better. I didn't fail okay. as abysmally, <laughs> but I do get one more hitch. Okay, so uh, mine has it popped up. So how many hitches do you have knowing that ones and twos count as hitches? One. Okay, okay. There so, we go. great, got it. Can uh, I, I am... use a plot mm -hmm. point to make this a success? Absolutely you can, yeah. All right, that's what I'm gonna do. All right, so that D8 that came up a three gets shifted into the total, bringing it up to 14, which is just enough. I'm still gonna buy that one hitch that you have to give you that D8 exhaustion. So nothing of that changes, Okay. Uh, but we do get a success here. So rather than that glancing blow, or actually here, let's roll with the, with the timing of all of this. So that glancing blow that you had ends up that uh, it bounces off another smaller bit of debris and just sort of bounces around for almost a minute, picking up speed and energy, and it ends up slamming back into that central asteroid uh, with much more force uh, than your initial laser blast. So though it wasn't immediate, Invicta, your blast was actually perfectly aimed to do a significant bit of damage to that major asteroid, and a much bigger chunk of it gets shorn off uh, and goes, goes careening off sort of in a different direction. And uh, Invicta, knowing that only Akemba will actually see this, does like a little like fist pump and she's like super excited that she didn't screw up after all. And then she's like, did you see that? Did you see that Akemba? See what I did there? I did see, well done. <clears throat> yes. She does oh, like a oh, little- Oh, please let me not to go on. Yes. He's just like, I love it. he's excited, but also I was like, my, my head is killing me. Oh no, and I have no medicine. Um, should, should I call Eli? No, no, I'll, I'll be fine. Um, so let me reduce the plot point while I'm at it. There you go. I have one plot point and I believe I used it in my last roll. So I don't know if I can trust. Did, did you use it on your last roll? Uh, <laughs> I thought so. To do what? Uh, if I if that's the case, then I didn't use my plot point. I don't. Yeah, no, I don't think you did. Uh, yeah. Because yeah, I added, I, I clicked it. the I clicked the die and then added uh -huh. a d8. What was the d8 for? If it wasn't the for my plot point. Eight. Oh, the d8 was because you used uh, lasers, which gives you an additional d8. Your mm, station. So I still have a plot point. Yeah, yeah. yeah I should have used my plot point last <laughs> turn, but it wouldn't have helped me because I had two 
Yeah, you had all ones. I'd, the other, I'd the other thing hitches, I should like, oh, you're done. Yeah, you had you're all game. hitches. And what I should mention, it hasn't come up yet, uh, but in case it does, you know, you can use as many plot points as you want to add as many additional dice to your total. The only exception is like, all hitches are taken out of the dice pool entirely. They're never available to be used either as defect die or as total dice. So you can't use plot points on hitches. It's the only tricky thing. So with your botch, unfortunately, you had no dice to pull from. I'm sorry. It was just such an out of this world chance that that happened. Anyway. Uh, all right. So we have Ikemba at tactical uh, starboard and we have Sila at uh, uh, what's the other one? Sensors uh, that still have to go. Who wants, who wants up next? I'll go before the captain. I figured the captain should go like with the big gusto. All right. Final movement. <clears throat> all right. So I saw the, based on what Invicta did on the other side of the ship and I was looking to see if there's any flares on my side of the ship and I like I can see that there's flares but I can't figure out which one to target and I want to like he's like checking internally to see is he crazy so like he's using scanners again to see where they are mm -hmm. yeah I mean <laughs> the sort of first and most obvious thing that you didn't really need the sensors for is the remains, you know, what's left of the great big thing in front of you. Uh, what you do see is that uh, the the bit that Invicta broke off that sort of bounced around all of the smaller debris, uh, that has sort of started moving things, uh, moving things around in unexpected ways, maybe ways that, uh, you know, it was such a wild shot by Invicta that, there's a chance that Eli's uh, contingency plans for the captain didn't include this new sort of uh, trajectory for these smaller bits. So you can sort of see that there are two, basically two um, clumps, for lack of a better word, of smaller debris that are forming uh, on the, you're on starboard, right? So yeah, on your side, on the starboard side of the ship okay. as well. So I'm targeting those and wanting to, uh kind of break them up so that they're not that big of a problem and yeah. kind of going with the same basis as before the mm -hmm. knowledge the I, mean, I thought I had a different skill set well no was survive at this point survive. Cause, okay because things okay. have changed like he's like losing it a little bit like not like going crazy but definitely not normal and he's mm -hmm. feeling the not normal and he's trying hard not to go back to his uh, bio priest uh, ways, even though he wants to, because oh. he, he, he knows that he only has, uh, at least with him, he only has a certain amount of ability with him at certain times. So he doesn't sure. want to use it all on himself. He would rather save it for the team if somebody else on the team has something happen to them. And like okay. he kind of like glances at Invicta a little bit, like, like how did she know that without him having said it? So he's kind of like set her back a little bit, like, sure. how did she figure me out that quick? Like he, he's kind of concerned, but also like <laughs> still just like in it. But it's just like how how did, is it that obvious? Okay, yeah. so he's internally like kind of like playing the game of like, really is it that blatant? But he's still trying to like. Uh, be on mission and on task. Yeah. So he's using knowledge of his skill set. He's using survive to make sure that uh, things can go. Uh, like he's using that internal, like I need to save everybody here as well as saving myself. And yeah. then he also uh, is focusing on his Massalian background because of how much time he spent uh, in space in small sure. spurts. Mm -hmm. So he's using all those to kind of like push yeah. Things in yeah. the hope of getting things better than he did last time. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. I mean, the Musalians in particular, uh, you know, all of the cultures have obviously have access to, to spacecraft and things like that, but the Musalians have made uh, some pretty significant strides and are some of the more prolific spacefarers, at least uh, of the cultures that exist on Musalia, on, on your home planet. So yeah, that makes perfect sense to me. I have a question. Do you feel, and no is a perfectly fine answer, do you think that we have discovered that maybe uh, Ikemba is uh, 
even more experienced than we originally thought in surviving, uh, that the importance of protecting others and surviving in tough situations. Do you feel like maybe this is a time to use some, some step Definitely. up points? Yeah. Definitely. He's uh, D8, D10. What are we thinking? How, how, uh, how deeply is he good at this? <laughs> very, but not like, it's not his entire, like everything. It's sure. heavily a focus of his. So sure. definitely D8 level okay. of uh, survival. Yeah. All right. So pull that D6 out and then just uh, grab just a, a blank D8 since since we will have your sheet updated for hopefully for next week. Uh, so that'll cost you one of your step up points. And I don't know if I said, but Eli, you stepped yours up twice. So it'll cost you two of those points for your fly. But I think you knew that. Where Great. do I see my, the remainder of my step up points? Um... I have them written down somewhere. They're not on the sheet. <laughs> okay, cool. I was, I was like, I'll remind me. Like, we'll check where in. Is it? No, no, no. We'll check in after, and I will figure out how many everybody has left. Uh, cool. Now, are you using lasers or missiles this time? Are you trying to use lasers and missiles? I'm trying to use lasers again because okay. lasers <laughs> seem like the best move, and uh, hoping for much better than last time. Fingers crossed. So you can toss another D8 in there since the D8 are uh, the lasers are a D8 asset. All right. Ready okay, to roll? That looks, uh, I'm going to do mine. So uh, D8s, two D8s for the base. Uh, and then, you know, that knock to the head is making things a little bit difficult. So I am going to toss that D10 into my pool. Here we yeah. go. I'm going to roll mine. I know, I know. I'm sorry. I didn't want to, but there it is. Okay. All right. It's an 11. So it could be worse. I think that's maybe the lowest I've rolled all night. Uh, I'm all right, okay so with we this. Need I had a three so last I. time though. So I got a lot of growth here. That I, but you that know I'm what? Acquiring. I believe in you, DJ and Dikemba. I believe in both of you. <laughs> All right, let's see what happens. Trying so hard to not use. All right. <clears throat> He's rolling. Okay. So, and what do we using, have? We have uh -huh, He's immediately ahead. using a plot point to get rid of that hitch. Uh, yeah, I don't you don't think you did you is a hitch showing up on yours cuz I don't have a one. I see a hitch on mine. I'm very concerned. Uh, with a, it's a big red one. No, it's a two. But it says ah. Eight. So the hitch is hitch is uh, yeah. For some reason, I don't know why it says hitch. Uh, but a two is not a hitch. Only a one. Only ones are hitches. So that's a that works for me. That's a computer bug uh, in our system, not yours. So no hitches. Great news. Your total is eight, and unfortunately, you need a twelve or better. So if you had two plot points, you could spend two to add both of those dice. But unfortunately, with only one plot point to your name at the moment, there isn't enough that you can do to turn this into a success. But with no hitches, you don't get any more stress. Uh, so that's good news. Uh, why don't you tell us what this looks like when Akemba fires this off? He tries. He, he presses the button that seems like lasers. Again, he actually touches the laser button. Hey. It's the proper laser. But it doesn't fire. Oh, it doesn't fire. Okay. It like it loads up and charges up, just and then immediately yeah. kind of just like goes to sleep. It's right back down. Yep. Something must have been hit with that first uh, that missile blast, uh, and it just couldn't get all the way to max power enough to fire. Uh, so that's that's not going to help out with that. Uh, but hey, at least he's not more injured. So you know, small mercies. <laughs> Uh, Captain Sila 919, or should I say, uh, uh, Sensor Officer Sila 919, uh, since we'll want to start there. Uh, you want to tell us what's going on at the sensor console? I am running scans at the moment, trying mm -hmm. to figure out what it is exactly that I need to do because I don't know, but I am going to figure it out. Yes, you are. The best of my ability. So I would like to scan through. Do I see anything that looks helpful? Uh, very possibly. I think to to use this to help out your piloting, uh, we're going to put together a dice pool for your sensor use. Now, I realize that uh, I didn't send anybody the abilities of the sensor suite because no one had picked it last week. Uh, so I'm going to have a look at this now. So uh, the first thing that you should know is that the sensor suite uh, gives you an additional D6 to your pool. So you can toss that in uh, however you like. 
the two talents that are available to you on the sensor suite. One of them is, uh, it's called, well, it's called full sensor sweep. Uh, and for the remainder of this scene, while you are patched into the sense to the sensor station, uh, you can step up your notice skill. So kind of like Eli was able to step up fly because mm -hmm. of the navigation system, uh, you are able to step up notice. Uh, in addition, you can, ah, well, now I feel bad that I didn't mention this earlier, but in addition, you can spend a plot point to step up uh, your tactical friend's shoot skill. Uh, I also, I have to point out, this has only just occurred to me, and it's one of the things that I really love about the narrative focus of the way dice pools are put together. We just had, between last week and this week, we had our tactical gun station essentially make a total of six dice pools, and not once did we use the shoot skill which is fine, it worked, right? Like we told a story that allowed those players to put together dice pools at a shooting station without using the shoot skill. And I think it worked great. I, I just had to point that out because I think it's very cool about this system. Anyway, Sila, sorry. <laughs> uh, what do we want? Let's, let's talk about your dice pool and what we're doing here. So uh, what are you gonna toss in from your character sheet? Oh, okay, again, I would like to lean into my knowledge of what I've learned from scanning the system. So a D8 for knowledge. Yep, absolutely. Then what can I use to boost from, well, it didn't really succeed, succeed, if I'm being quite <laughs> honest. So I don't really know if that's quite helpful. No shade, LT. Um, hmm. <laughs> so I'm gonna also pull from duty because okay, as sure. the captain, it is my duty to get us out of this situation. Sure. How many more do I have left? Well, you can pull from from you can pull one from every chunk. Uh, we don't, as I recall, we didn't step up any of your skills during character creation. Do you think that notice might be a skill that Sila is is maybe is maybe pretty good at? Do we want to spend some some character build points to step up your your notice skill since you're at the sensor station? Let's do that. Yeah, I think so. How good is Sila at the notice skill? D6, D8, is she really good? Are we popping to D10? What do you think? Uh, Sila, in essence, is what you would call nosy. So I would say a D10. Yeah, okay. So you've got, okay, so this is, and, and we'll, we'll deal with the points of out of session because uh, I've got them here. But your, your notice skill is now going to just forever be, because you're using these points at a D10. Since you are at the sensor suite, you are able to step that up for these particular tests to a D12. So go ahead and toss a D12 into this pool because the uh, station gives you that ability. Excellent. Let's see, what do we got? Uh, so we have the D6 from that. Yeah, uh, unless there's anything else that you can think of that was it would be useful on your character file, that looks like a pretty good dice pool to me. What you think? Can I use do it right or get out of my way? Hell yes, you can use do it right or get out of my way. Tell me how. Oh, I just want that to be like the, the confidence boost that I need. Absolutely. To be able to lean into my own knowledge and know that just because I can't get it right at that moment doesn't mean that I don't know what I'm doing and I'm going to use that to power through it. Absolutely. I love that. Yes. So toss that, toss another D8 into the pool there. Throw some D8. That is a nice looking dice pool. Oh. All right. Uh, so. I'm gonna roll the difficulty. Let's see what we come up with. Okay, that's a little nicer, it's an eight. You just need a nine or better and you have some dice to do it. So let's roll us out Miss Sila and see what happens. Oh, it is a thing of beauty, that dice pool. 
In fact, it's so good that here's what I'm going to say. And we also, this, uh, I have been keeping an eye on this to see if and when it will be relevant. And it hasn't been yet, but I think we're going to do it here. So <laughs> you only needed a nine, right? Now, what the, what the system here on the computer has done is it's given you the highest possible total, right? Gave you a 20. That's fantastic. You don't need it to be that big, right? All you need is a nine. And I'm gonna say that the effect die, right? Which we haven't really used too much. I used it on one of, in, 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 for Invicta last round in terms of being able to completely destroy that asteroid. We want the effect die to be the, it doesn't matter what numbers on it. We just wanna put in that space the largest size die possible. So rather than using the 12, do if you, are we okay? Audio is okay? I feel like the audio just briefly hated really? us just a little bit. Is yeah. that okay now? No. No, it is not okay. What's happening? We've entered the twilight zone. Stop. <laughs> You've gotten really loud all of a sudden. That's what happened. I've gotten really loud. Now Great. you're fine. Now you're fine. Back to normal. Oh, just that okay. Quick. Well, that was horrifying. I apologize to everyone. Uh, we're okay now? To the twilight little, zone. little tinny, but you, your volume is good. Okay, well, mm -hmm. uh, we are so close to the end, so I, I apologize for the uh, quality. I'm sure it's probably one of my ports or something, but I will deal with that later. I want to get through this. So, Sila, if you want, you can choose any two of those dice to add up to nine or better and move maybe the D12 into your effect die, because that just means that you will be that much more successful. Okay, so... Do I need to end that turn and go into it or is, oh, no, no, it's in five so I can move. You could drag stuff wherever you want. So maybe you want to move like, I don't honestly, you could, I don't know, drag maybe one of the, the D5, that five. Yeah, they, oh. Yeah, and then put the five in the total. This is just fiddly bits so that we can see it, but so that you all know what this is, right? So now your total is 13, but more importantly, your effect die is a D12. So that is... You succeed beautifully at your sensor suite. You see exactly where the ship can pilot through, where things are now that Invicta and Ikemba have fired some things off and moved some of the debris around. You are able to, to uh, see exactly where a path might be, where there are obstructions and all of that. So well done, sensor officer Sila 919. Bertrand is going to uh, is going to attempt to goose the power uh, back in engines again. Uh, so I'm going to make this check now. Unfortunately, Bertrand doesn't have any personal stress, but the engines have a D6 of stress. So I'm going to have two D8s and a D6. Uh, we're going to roll those up, and my total this time is another arrow three fours. Uh, so it's another eight for Bertrand to beat. Uh, he just needs a nine or better. Where are Bertrand's numbers? So we're going to toss together again a 10 for duty. We're going to toss a 10 for fix since he's messing with his engines. And we are going to toss a six for his station. Roll that up. We just need a nine or better. And we got a 10. So Bertrand is also able to provide uh, Captain Sila 919 with some assistance. So... Captain Sila 919, you have uh, Invicta, one of your tactical station officers, has blown up a significant portion of the greatest asteroid threat. Your navigations officer has given you several possible contingency plans for how to navigate through the remaining debris field. Uh, you, in your sensor suite, have confirmed which of Eli's possible paths is going to end up working the best, and Bertrand has given the engines just enough power to really make it through. So Captain Sila 919, are you ready for our final test of the solar storm? I'm ready. I know you are. So, ready to go. All of the information at your disposal. We're going to build one more dice pool for you, and you are going to get a, uh, outside of anything that you toss in this dice pool, you're going to get a D12 asset to add in there from all of your crew members' support. So we'll start with that D12 asset right off the bat. Now, go ahead and build the pool uh, however else you would like to. 
Sorry, there's just a lot of options. I know there's so many options. Uh, let's see. So uh, of your distinction, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So in wanting to bring pride to the Montagene in pulling this off, would I be able to use that or should I use, yeah. like, I mean, that wouldn't be glory necessarily, but could I just no, use I think D8 for a Montagene? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, drawing on that. And also the Mansagani's, I mean, intrinsic connection to, you know, technology uh, also, I think, is a great reason to use that. So, yeah, definitely toss that in. And inspired by the fact that she has been dealing with so much code and just seeing it forcing through her head as she scans these systems, she's going to tap into her bio priest. Okay. Now, now again, like we did with notice, uh, we don't have any other skills trained at this point, but do we think that, now we know that Sila has doesn't have a ton of experience at flying, but do we think that her knowledge of flying is enough to, uh, to merit maybe, maybe even just a D6? Of, of the fly skill, or does that not feel like a thing that Sila would have? I think it would, but it would have to be something that's low because, mm -hmm. again, she knows all the material, but she also already took a hit on the ship. So let's just be nice here. Sure. <laughs> sure. So yeah, so do you want to you spend maybe a point to get the fly skill to a D6? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. I buy that. I buy that. Um, did we pick a value for you? Do you feel like any of the values are going to help you out here? And and maybe maybe not. Maybe they won't. I don't know. It's up to you. Uh, this may hinder me, but I'm hoping it helps me. I do have a D4 for untrained. Uh, in this, oh, okay. So the un, you mean in the skills? Untrained is just the placeholder for when you haven't stepped up a skill at all. It's not a skill in and of itself. It should be. So, it's, maybe it should be. You're, maybe you're not wrong. <laughs> uh, but since we're going to toss in the D6 for fly anyway, you can unless you spend plot points, you can only use uh, one skill per dice pool. Oh, I don't have a plot point anymore, Invicta. Better roll some um, hitches. <laughs> let me... Uh, I'm going to go with knowledge and hope that helps as well. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Let's pull this dice pool together for me and roll it up. And this, ooh, this is a 14. So we need a 15 to beat. You can absolutely do it with this pool. I have faith. Um, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Before you roll. Oh, you did roll. Okay, that's right. Yeah. Hey, but you did it. I looked away for one second and you did it. Yes. All right. Uh, so you, well, you describe Captain Sila. What does this incredible navigation through the debris field over the final wave of solar wind? What does this look like, Sila? 919. So Sila grabs the controls, leans in, pulls them all the way back into herself and you start to see the ship just sail up above it. Yes. And it's like, she kicks it. Takes yes. off a little shaky, little shaky, but then boom, right over it and takes everyone into smooth sailing. Yes, and it is just like the, it looked like the asteroid was riding the front of the wave. Sila perfectly crests over the back of the wave, rolls down it uh, and out into free and clear open space. In doing so, uh, it is the amount of work it takes for you to, I mean, because remember this ship is 
Hathare size, so it is big. So it took quite a bit. I'm gonna buy that hitch from you. Uh, so you get a plot point, and I'm gonna go ahead and give you a D6 of exhausted stress as well. Uh, I don't think it makes sense to step up the insecure stress because you did so well, uh, but it was a physical effort. So I'm gonna step up the exhausted stress. Did you put that in or do I put that in? Uh, you do, uh, on the modify stress all the way on the left. One so as, exhausted or uh, six D6 of exhausted. Of That's the one. Yes, all right. So uh, as the ship crests, uh, as the ship crests, you all have made it out of the static through the solar flare uh, storm and back into clear space. And here on the other side, uh, you still have a few days before you're going to reach the planet of Hathare, uh, but for the moment, tired, afraid, perhaps feeling a little unsure of yourself, beat up on the head, you all have made it through and you just, not on the all call comm system, just it's so loud that you can just hear it from the engine room, just the most joyful of Hatharayan trumpeting that it can be heard throughout the ship. Uh, and shortly after that, you just hear the heavy, heavy footsteps of Bertrand racing for the bridge. Uh, and Bertrand uh, bursts onto the bridge and runs over uh, to you, uh, uh, Captain Sila 919 and runs and is a few feet from you, arms outstretched, and then sort of stops and says, uh, Captain, that was uh, exquisite. M may I hug you? I'm not a hugger. Understood. Still, I give you my heartiest. Oh, Yes, that will, I have seen this handshake custom, not one uh, commonly practiced on Hathare, but I understand it holds great weight with some cultures. Oh, how delightful. You all were magnificent. I thank you, and oh, the wistful wish thanks you as well. You're welcome. Can I do a thing? Of course you can do a thing. So of course we can hear this because it's like comms are open. We're all like, oh God, we survived. <laughs> <laughs> and when I hear I'm not a hugger, I go, give that elephant a hug. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to have a hug so bad, then you can hug it yourself. Hey, Bartrand's not an it. You be nice. What did what did Akemba tell you? Be luxurious. Be nice. That being said, um, um uh, I'm going to <laughs> what make my way towards Akimba because like commotion is happening. Yeah. Uh, and I I can tell that uh Invicta is doing all right. <laughs> so <laughs> from the back and forth so i haven't heard anything from akimba so i'm gonna make my way towards akimba to see how they're how they're holding up so uh, i i walk in um akimba how are you we, we've just made it we just made it through the solar storm i believe i'll be fine just i believe i need a night to rest i see um well, if I may, I, I may be able to assist um, just briefly. Um, and let me see, I'm gonna try and, I don't know if this is gonna be a roll or something that I can do as a light bringer, but I'm just gonna try and see if I can uh, kind of stop the, I don't wanna say, maybe heal the injury enough to where I know that, uh, that it can, can rest rest it through. Not that like I'm going to fully heal Akemba, but I'm going to be able so that uh, I know that they 
they they have inherent healing and so does Sila, but I'm going mm-hmm. to just make sure that they're good and they can rest the night and be fine for the rest if, if that's their choice. Yeah. So uh, this brings up a good point here. Uh, so there are a couple of ways to reduce stress or to, if you want to say, heal stress, right? One right. of them is any time that we do a scene that is not sort of high octane, right? That is, could be considered a relatively restful scene. Uh, you can step down some stress. The other, but only by, you know, a single step. And Akemba has some pretty significant, sure. uh, some pretty significant stress here. Another way to step down is when I, whenever I roll hitches, uh, the person that I'm rolling against can uh, spend plot points to, to use that to step down their stress. And the third way is exactly what you're doing now, Eli. Uh, the third way that you can reduce stress either uh, for yourself or more commonly for others is to do, uh, is to make a test. Uh, mm-hmm. So the test, the difficulty, what I will be rolling to determine the difficulty of the test is, is standard at all times. It is 2d8 plus whatever the stress die is. So I'll be rolling two d8 and a d10. Oh no! Uh, and you will, uh, and you will make a roll. You know, you'll put together a pool, uh, however you think is is reasonable. Okay. Now, what I will say is, as we have learned, making tests and contests, when we eventually get to those, always carries risk. Right? It's a significant narrative moment, which means great stuff can happen, but it's running the risk of making things uh, difficult as well. So it's up to you, Eli, if you want to mechanically try to reduce some of Akemba's stress, or if you just want to have a narrative moment where you're sort of patching him up and it, it you know, it makes sure that he doesn't get worse and we sort of just deal with it narratively. Let's it's go entirely the, up to you. Let's go with the narrative bit. And then um, I think, cause we're still looking at what Lightbringer all comes with. So I'm going to do the narrative bit and then see what yeah. that comes with later. Great. Yeah, I think that's great. Okay. So in that case, narrate away. Um, I'm going to uh, see if I would imagine somewhere this ship produces some sort of um, ice and then also um, let's see. Yeah, I'd probably get some ice and then I would tell them to rest in a certain position where they don't put too much pressure on their head. I would just kind of instruct them of like, this is how you take care of yourself after you have a head injury. So I'm kind of giving them help for the symptoms, but not treatment for the injury. So I'm just like sure. treating like the, the painfulness and, and all that, but not actually directly healing what's going on with them. Sure, 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 sure. That makes sense. Uh, Ikemba. I appreciate your assistance. This, this does feel much better. It's not as pressing as it was. Not to worry, it's good to see that you've made it through. We've all made it through. And um, thank you for getting back on your station. It was much appreciated. It was my pleasure. Well, um, let's get you to where everyone is. And I'm going to, if uh, I'm gonna look at Akimba and kind of maybe see if they're good to stand up or to not. (laughs) And if so, like I was gonna have us try and both get over to where all the commotion is in the um and at the helm essentially because i'm just trying to figure out like do we need to come together just make sure like everyone has eyes on each other and everyone's okay yeah so uh in you go i y'all y'all play that out I, yeah um, bertrand should, is thrilled and excited that's all y'all need to know <laughs> should we um should we join the others just so that uh we can get a count of everyone oh it sounds like everyone's all right but sure why not Sounds like a good idea. Thank you. Um, and uh, yeah, I think like we all assemble over to the helm and um, well, it looks like we've made it through um, something quite daring. Uh, I'm glad that we all made it through in one piece. Uh, Bertrand, it sounds like you're okay. Yeah, sorry. My name is Bertrand. I'm Bertrand. Yes. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what I was doing that distracted me in a minute, but I don't want to spoil anything yet. Uh, so Bertrand, yes, I, I'm, I'm quite good. Uh, yes, I, uh, I have never seen such um, late game 
performance, let's say. It was magnificent. It is an honor to fly with the four of you. Uh, in fact, uh, tonight I am making a Hathorean specialty for dinner for all of us. Grass with a side of bark. Sounds wonderful. Um... Uh, Sila 919, are you still fully operational? It appears so. And, and Victor, are you doing well? Oh, I'm, I'm great. And I just, I very intentionally stroll over to Bartrand and give him a hug. Oh, and Bartrand, Bart he just envelops you uh, in this hug and, and sort of like bounces a little because he is still very uh, hyped up on adrenaline, but also very happy. <laughs> um, so once, once he finally, if he lets go, or I'm just like... <laughs> Eventually. You, um, so, so Bartrand, I, I can appreciate your, your delicacies, but I'm a carnivore. Is there any meat? on this ship? Oh, my goodness, of course, uh, of course. Uh, yes, uh, there is plenty for all of you, uh, and and we will be sure to prepare uh, food to all of your liking. Uh, the grass and bark dish will be a, a sample of my planet's uh, culture and cuisine. Thank you. I just, I just give Sila a very almost wolfish grin. <laughs> Excuse me, crew. Yes. Well done. You have all performed your jobs as you were supposed to, and we have made it through an exceptionally stressful situation. You have done well carry on with your day thank you i kind of like slowly walk up to captain silo 919 just i see what you're doing captain and i uh i appreciate that you are treating the crew luxuriously as one would it is it is a pleasure to see. We may need to work on the delivery a bit, but you give me hope, and this I greatly appreciate. And at that moment, Sila cocks her head to the side. Power ring down. And you all I watch. She leaves the conversation. Yep, yep, and exactly. Wow. And again, just... he sees that and is just like, <laughs> oh man. I expected as much. Thank you nonetheless, Captain Sila 919. Though you've powered down your body, I know you're here with us somewhere. You are appreciated nonetheless. I look forward mm. to our next encounter. And then uh, he walks over to Virgin and just. I appreciate your service to us all. And he kind of oh. he gives him a hug as well. Oh, and he gives it right back. And it's actually in the midst of this, uh, of, of Bertrand's second hug of the day, he's just on cloud nine, uh, that an alert comes up uh, on the panels there on the bridge and uh, catches Bertrand's eye and, and probably, well, maybe not Silas, but the rest of yours uh, catches as well. Uh, and immediately uh, Bertrand's ears and, and trunk uh, begin to droop and his trunk, the tip of the trunk sort of begins to tremble a little bit. And he says, oh, uh, bef before dinner, we have another problem. It seems that the strike that the ship took may have damaged the water containment system. Uh, we must be sure that we do not lose our cargo of water. Hathare depends on it. And that's where we'll finish for this week. 
All right. Oh my God. Uh well done everyone that was at full of mechanics i know that you all did beautifully i think we told a very exciting well i don't know i was excited i don't know about y'all but i thought it was a very exciting story thank you so very much i have had a blast tonight uh and i i super appreciate it uh, really quick, uh, we're gonna we're gonna say uh, our our goodbyes here. I do want to quickly once again thank uh, the amazing sponsors that we have for helping us to be here. We want to thank Die Hard Dice. Uh, of course, you can check out their stuff, dieharddice.com. Blue microphones for our sound equipment, bluemics.com. Uh, obviously, Cortex uh, by Fandom. Thank you all so much for all of your support and helping us put together the mechanics for the system. And thank you to Twitch uh, for being such a major supporter of our endeavors here in the motherlands. I really appreciate it. This this has been such a wonderful time uh, and I can't wait to see what happens next week. Let's go ahead and go around. Uh, we will go in the same order we started with. Let us know uh, who you are, where we can find you on the interwebs uh, and anything else we should know about you from tonight. Uh, so I believe that means we are starting with Tanya. Hey y'all, um, you can find me usually here at some point during the week um, doing anything from mini painting the division two or Animal Crossing, depending on what I feel like. That's is life of a variety streamer. Uh, Thursday, you can find me and Eugenio in reverse positions for our season two finale of Dragon Age, the RPG. We had to uh, postpone a week because Gremlins got in the works. Uh, Saturday is an extra stream. I will be DMing a game of Star Trek for Roll20 Con with most of the rivals Waterdeep and our friend Brian Gray. Uh, I will take. I'll be boldly taking them somewhere. I don't know yet because I haven't written it. And uh, Sundays, come over to Rivals of Waterdeep at 10 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Central. And uh, we're in season eight. I'm the DM there. And then, of course, come back here at 6 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Pacific. Oh, yeah. And Saturday, Dungeon Crossing uh, before we have to take a little break due to travel and life happening. Maybe people will find a dragon. Maybe they won't. I haven't decided yet. So a lot of RPGs in my life. Uh, find me on Twitter, Cypher of Tears, my handle, and find yourself already blocked and think about the people you're following. Have a good night. Yes, what an outro. Uh, Christina. Um, my name is, sorry, <laughs> my name is Christina Ariel, K R Y S T I N A A R I E L L E. You can find me on the internet, on Twitter, Instagram, all the things at Christina Ariel. Uh, tomorrow, I will be on Improvised Champions on CNE Games Twitch with myself and Mark Mir, where we play what, well, a masked Lord of Waterdeep plays the game and we comment as Bailoff and Ariza. And then I will be with Michael Kritz at three o'clock on the LFM network for a new episode of Rise of the Veiled Alliance. On Wednesday is the, is the finale of. Pirates of Leviathan. I'm really sad. It's taking an emotional toll on my chest. But uh, yeah, so that's going to happen on Wednesday at 4 p.m. Pacific time. And yeah, then I'm going to chill. Absolutely. And you will deserve it. Uh, let's keep going around. Michael. Yeah. Hi, uh, Michael Sinclair II. Uh, I go by Michael Critz everywhere on um, Twitch, on Twitter, on Instagram. Uh, I play Manage the Gathering on my own Twitch channel, World of Warcraft, and Battles Gate 3. So, still have a bunch of games. Um, and then, like Christina Ariel said, I am on the Looking for More's uh, show, um, Journey to the Obsidian Spire, which you can catch tomorrow. And then I'm also on Fae Forge Academy podcast uh, every Friday. And before we head out, I just want to apologize to uh, everyone. I used the word crazy during the session. I did not. Uh, I, I will make sure I'm more cognizant about that, uh, not using that word, but I just want to let everyone know that uh, I will be doing the work to do that. So, but had a wonderful time tonight, uh, really great session and uh, looking forward to the next, the next one for sure. Awesome. Thank you, Michael. Last but most certainly not least, DJ. Hi, I'm DJ. The biggest thing I do outside of my stream is here because these are all amazing people and I am excited to be a part of the project. I'm a full-time space and sci-fi streamer here on Twitch, but I also play a lot of variety stuff. It's not just space and sci-fi. Otherwise I would lose my ever loving mind. So space and sci-fi is the focus. Everything else comes and is fun because reasons it is an absolute blast. It's coming on and hanging with you guys on Sundays and I'm honored for the opportunity. Thank you all. and look forward to seeing you next week. 
All right. And once again, I'm Eugenio. You can find me on Twitter at, at DM Jazzy Hands. Uh, I'm your storyteller here every Sunday night. I'm also the DM and producer of an actual play D&D podcast called The Last Refuge. Uh, new episodes release every Wednesday. You can find us on Twitter at, at DND Last Refuge. Uh, I do stream on my own channel here on Twitch at DM Jazzy Hands. Same name. Tuesdays, we play Dragon Age 2. And Thursdays and Fridays, we play Baldur's Gate 3 in a playthrough where I give the chat all of the options. Uh, chat makes all the decisions for the um the dialogue choices uh in this playthrough and we've had a real good time doing that uh where else can you find me tuesday starting this coming tuesday uh in the evening i am going to be a player in a dnd stream dnd campaign uh over on mtd mini terrain domain jake's channel uh we're playing through the harper's tale module which should be really awesome our session one is this tuesday uh thursday as tanya said we've got our dragon age finale this coming thursday and is there anything else I'm supposed to talk about? I think that covers it. Uh, it has been an absolute pleasure this evening. We are going to raid, so if you all uh, are wanting some more tabletop goodness, hang out. Uh, but I just want to remind you all that we will hopefully see you back here next Sunday, same time, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Uh, and to find out, you know, about this water tank and maybe to learn a little bit more about a few of our characters and where they came from. Um, that's all I'll say for now, but we may see a bit of that uh, next week as well. So we're going to go over and raid I Need Diverse Games. They are playing some, some tabletop RPGs as well, so we're going to go hop over there. Thank you all so much for hanging out and being here with us. We super appreciate it. We hope you have enjoyed. We will see you next week. In the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy. Please wear a mask, and happy gaming, y'all. <laughs>